Welcome into Heroes CCL presented by Wisdom. My name is Bahamut, and this weekend I'm joined by two wonderful Heroes the Storm casters. I've got Grubby with me and taking place for McIntyre, who doesn't love us enough to stay every weekend. We got Crow in with us once again. I have informed all of the CCL writers that they're not allowed to speed run the weekend. We need to get a lot more Crow in than we did in the <laughs> early part of the season. But I want to jump to you, Crow, and immediately. How are you doing, my friend? How has it been watching CCL since you were here at the start? now you're here kind of towards the end yeah I'm, I'm doing great thank you very much i'm very glad to be back here and it's very interesting seeing the progression of all of these ccl teams from the beginning when i was here and now for you know the playoffs the gauntlet run this is the most exciting part of this season for me and i'm sure for a lot of people uh as well because we could see another like super hype comeback story right it was simplicity in season one making the gauntlet run and then now it could be one of these teams that we're seeing here first today, Diamond Hands vs. Granite. I mean, some hype action all around. Excited to get into it. We're very hype indeed. And we were talking before the stream started. Grubby, you're probably very hype after the uh, Storm League games you had earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, had some, uh, you know, it's always nice to see the connection between CCL and Storm League. And what I was most excited about, besides uh, getting to enough points for Grandmaster again on my main account, uh, is, is there's this trend that we've seen in the CCL on Tomb of the Spider Queen, where teams bring four players to the bottom lane, both teams, and they have a Mephisto or a Junkrat doing top and mid. We've seen that in CCL, we've seen it in Storm League, but I'd never had a chance to play it yet. And I found a team today that wanted to try it and it works. CCL uh, has had teams and players that have been improving, like Corona has said. It's a really big difference between play day one and seven. Uh, and, 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 and now we're getting to this point where everyone's better and it's a trickle down effect. People in Storm League are getting better from it as well. That's why it's so nice to have uh, yeah, the CCL and Storm League, and then just comparing to see how the level is developing. It's really great to see the Heroes of Storm community growing as a whole and learning together as well. There was actually a wonderful article uh, posted by uh, a viewer that I have pop into my stream every so often, Zell. It was talking about CCL, Girls Gang Squad, and the grassroots scene of uh, Heroes of Storm kind of thriving after uh, what was considered the the you know the death tone or the death bell of the uh, the HCC collapsing. But still, we're here. We're in season two, and we're giving you some amazing games. Before we start talking about those games, we got a thing, couple things to catch you all up on. Let's talk about this prizing. Let's look at how this has changed from last weekend to this weekend. We're at thirteen thousand three hundred and ten dollars because of your support at home. Sixty percent of that will be going to the players. You can see how first place will take thirty five of that in the breakdown. If they win first place, we'll see who that will be. And then to be transparent. With with you all as always 40 percent will be coming back so that way we can build out wonderful graphics we can have super cool scene transitions and we can also have a lot of wonderful casters like grubby and crow and join us and like a wonderful transition just like that thank you so much production for throwing that out there for us but as crone was saying we got a lot of good games today and grubby I, i'm just kind of like what's your excitement level at i want to get i want to get you like your hype level are you are you through the roof or are you you you're you're a kettle about to start steaming and boiling well i, I will take a lot of excitement from uh seeing how the teams have prepared for this uh, we're going to be starting things off of course with rank seven and rank eight teams playing against one another in a knockout that's the exciting part here before mm -hmm. every single match you could say if you are the strongest team in the room everything else doesn't matter just prove it all at the gauntlets just win everything without losing anything and then everything you've shown up until this point doesn't matter mm -hmm. you've been sandbagging and hiding strats all along <laughs> but now it's not like that anymore and it probably wasn't in general anyway <laughs> now every single match is knockout that's why it's exciting Let's actually take a look at those standings, Crow, and, and uh, you know, as things have shaped up throughout the season, I'm curious just to get, you know, you were here at the start and want to get your thoughts. Is this how you expected the standings to go after kind of testing the water or seeing the initial start of CCL? Or are you kind of like, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I completely called it. This is my bracket. I knew I knew it all along. I'm, I'm just uh, galaxy brain <laughs> in CCL. Yeah, I don't know if I would say I'm quite galaxy brain, but this is kind of about where I expected things to shape up. I mean, I, I think the top three definitely were looking like Simplicity, Storm, 30k. I'm actually a little bit surprised that they're four and three. I thought they would be maybe like a, a five and two or something like that, but still, they're very close to that. And it is kind of expected to see the teams like Diamond Hands and Granite Gaming kind of down towards the bottom. But I still think, as I think I mentioned, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks ago, they're still showing some signs 
of, of life and some signs of improvement, it perhaps just wasn't quite as much as, as I would have hoped for. But yeah, this, this is about where, where, where things are shaping up. But I mean, anything could still happen, right? These teams, maybe it's not the case that they were sandbagging the whole season, as Grubby <laughs> was saying. It's probably not the case. But hey, teams sometimes turn up when there's playoffs, when it's do or die. And hey, this is the time to do it. As you mentioned earlier, Crow, in the storyline of Simplicity from Season 1, they were having a rocky group stage, and then they showed up for the ladder. And we can, as Grubby had mentioned, we can show you how this ladder is going to break down, who's going to play who, because I'm sure there's some players, or even, not players, excuse me, viewers, who are like, I want to know when Chili Mountain plays. Well, that's going to be tomorrow. Today, we're going to be having Diamond Hands up against Granite Gaming. That's our first best of five. The winner of that will go up against Wildheart, and then so on and so forth. The the giant or the the titan or the colossus that you have to fight at the end of this is Oxygen Esports. They are your gatekeepers here, Grubby, as they are basically going to be able to watch all these games, do their research, and that is the last game on Sunday. Oxygen versus whoever's been climbing through the bracket. Um, as you look at this, though, Grubby, who do you think? Like, who do you think's going to end up in that Sunday spot? Part of me actually kind of wants Granite Gaming to ride that line and actually be the team up against Oxygen on Sunday. Do you have any maybe expectations or or hype or thought about it? Well, I'm with you with the support for the underdog there. It looked like Granite Gaming was going to be a repeat of season one's Chili Mountain, but now suddenly they've got two wins. They're looking a lot better, and they rediscovered themselves last week. So it definitely could happen. I think all teams are strong and have shown good and worse sides of themselves. Mm. So it's about who comes most prepared. Well, before we get into this game, I want to go ahead and thank our sponsor. We are proud to be sponsored by PSD Underwear. You can find the best skins for your IRL underwear game at PSD, and you can get 20% off of your order with Wisdom, W-I-S-D-O-M, at checkout. Use the command exclamation point PSD in chat to go to a curated page of wonderful underwear. You saw those spicy tapatio underwear as we were getting into the uh, stream today. And if you, you know, think that you could rock something that hot, go ahead and check them out and use wisdom at checkout for 20% off your order. One last thing, I know we're ready and rearing to get into this series, but I also want to let you all know we got an award show happening. The nominations have gone through and now it's your time at home to vote. All you have to do is hit exclamation point awards in chat and then you get taken to an easy, simple Google form where all you have to do is click buttons. There's no typing, there's no research, and if you're like, man, what is this clip about? Well, there's a link to that clip as well. So if you're unsure about what you're voting on, there's examples to exactly what the uh, category is for. So I hope you hit exclamation point awards and check out the award show that is going to be happening later in July. But now Grubby and Crow, and we're here ready to go. Let's look at this Diamond Hands roster, Grubby. Excitement. Are you ready to see Ucky control these lanes with their hogger? Or is this going to be the shining moment for Caesar Cell to come out and start playing a new brack? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm most looking forward to seeing how bad Benny leads his team. Uh, he has one of the most creative engages when it comes to any tank in CCL, uh, for better and worse. For some reason, they're able to find kills in rotations that people normally deem safe because they're not getting punished on them. That's what I'm excited about to see. It's a star-studded roster that has a undeserved 2-5 record, it feels like. Like, they could be better, but at the end of the day, someone has to win, someone has to lose. Diamond Hands won twice out of seven games, but I think they're very strong and they're gonna give what's... They're gonna give everything they can. I would expect that from Diamond Hands, and the same can be said over on the side of the Granite Gaming roster, Crowen. This is the true, this is our eighth place underdog. Expectations, excitement, maybe even a player that you're like, that's the one I'm watching for. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm excited for this roster. I think they're coming off of a uh, very hard-fought win versus Wildheart last week. I'm definitely going to be looking towards, I think, Ultralisk specifically, personally. I think the Ultralisk can have a lot of presence when it comes to these, you know, kill compositions that Granite does like to run a lot. Uh, Ultralisk, especially on Kerrigan, I mean, that's always a treat to watch. I'm excited to see how that does pair off when we do get into our games. I'm still excited to see Skog as well. I think Skog has uh, has really developed a lot as a frontline tank player over the course of the season. So excited to see if that kind of uh, awareness and presence and uh, aggressiveness, I guess, can come to the line, come to the fold here today. There's a lot that is expected from both of these teams. And the, un the only thing we don't know before we get into, the into this first series of the day is going to be where we're going to head off to. And I can get you all caught up to date on that information. Granite Gaming won the coin flip, opting for first pick priority in this best of five series. 
and they banned out Sky Temple. The members of Diamond Hands who had map pick priority banned out Tomb of the Spider Queen and have chosen to take us to Battlefield of Eternity. Now, I was doing a lot of stat work in here before the stream started, and we were talking a little bit about this, and the one thing that I was kind of looking at is, is who's kind of got bad maps? Who's just lost on maps and maybe struggled on specific places? Battlefield yeah. of Eternity is an 03 map for Granite Gaming, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's an 03 map. So they haven't won here, and I like the due diligence and the research grubby done by Diamond Hands. I feel like this is something we see in a lot of um, esports in general. Like, I'm sure this is something in Warcraft 3 that you do and competitively. If you see a player who's been struggling on a map, you maybe take him to that map if he doesn't ban it out and try and punish him for uh, previous mistakes as well. I probably should have done that in Warcraft 3. No, <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, we did. Definitely. That's a big part of it. And that's smart. Uh, leveraging an 03 map against them. At the same time, we see the, the ban on Sky Temple. Uh, I think that's also a map where Diamond Hands can play well. So it makes sense for Granite to remove it. But it's also very much uh, that's the one map where we can be avoided the entire game and not get a team fight. And that's not something that the team fight heavy Granite wants. In week number four, Diamond Hands went up against Granite Gaming, and that Sky Temple map was actually the game-turning map in that series, where Diamond Hands ran a Samuro Abathur composition, and that is the <laughs> only Samuro that they've ever ran. So, and and it was it was. Demo not demonstrative. It was it was a dominating uh, game from the side of Diamond Hands. So it's just both teams doing their research, prepping for this latter playoff game here, Crowan. But I need to get your thoughts. I need to get your big brain going into Battlefield expectations of of pick priority or even just draft style. I actually want to highlight one thing already. Sure. Where, you know, off the bat is the Li Ming ban. Mm -hmm. Coming in the first few weeks of CCL, I feel like no, almost no teams had Li Ming on their priority list for either picks or bans, but how it has evolved to this point, recognizing that Li Ming still very, very strong in this meta can still go very, very well into a single target kill blow up and then reset composition. So I like that coming out of Diamond Hands for the first ban, knowing how specifically Granite likes to run things. And now, Granite coming out of the gates with the first pick, Blaze. I think we've been seeing a bit of a more Blaze party recently as well. Oh, Maybe yeah. Maybe a fantastic pick. And ooh, Fall of Mouth being the response. I mean, I think Mouth is, is pretty uh, pretty solid for Diamond Hands, I think, pretty expected. Some more stats for you all, Grubby, as uh, I was looking earlier. That is the 21st ban on Lucio from the side of Granite Gaming in this season. <laughs> going in, like I just, I had a bunch of stats today and I was eating breakfast. Wow. I'm like, I'm just going to go through all this and 20 bands onto Lucio. That makes it 21. But what are your thoughts on everything for Battlefield so far? I'm interested in this Fala pickup. Fala uh, is very strong now. She had actually a buff to her Q build, a nerf to her multi shot. And I actually feel like Q has snuck up to be the better build, having mm -hmm. played both recently and having at least a storm league success with it, but the Q one is the one that has crazy burst, whereas Multishot ends up peppering in a way that Stukov, I think, doesn't worry as much about as he ends up healing everyone. But it's very much about what is your general damage and kill plan? What is your win condition, not for the game, but for a team fight? So it will depend on what other heroes Diamond Hands will be picking up. Are they going for Genji style resets? You can expect Q build Fala without Monster Hunter, that's a trap talent. You go for the <laughs> PvP value. Uh, racing, still good even without the Monster Hunter. But we'll see which build he's gonna be going for as the draft develops. Chromie is a fantastic pickup. It's now up to Diamond Hands to decide how they wanna go kill things. Which tank, which finisher, uh, is it double support? Most likely not with Uther and Lucio missing. Uh, but yeah, uh, what? which direction are they gonna go for? Kind of like the idea of maybe like a Muradin or something like that from Diamond Hands. I like his aggression. Mobility is really good. But we'll see a Karazim Sonya. Uh, as this is kind of starting to wrap up here, Crow, and I want to get your thoughts on what's unfolding, maybe even expectations for which way the map can go. Maybe it's a little too early to call. Yeah, I'm already definitely liking what Diamond Hands is putting together. I think the double support into kind of Chromie poke damage is going to be um, going to be kind of too much for Granite Gaming to be able to hit through. So Granite right now has to think, pick, I think, a very heavy tank engage, like one that can definitely have a lot of backline access, as well as another damage dealer. They're picking Murden, which honestly I, I wouldn't have expected to be uh, the first pick in mind for them. But the Hanzo, I think, is very, very good. It provides a little bit of race. It provides engage as well. We do think about going to that Dragon's Arrow. Find, um, finding it on key targets, I think, will be a bit hard because Karazim, um, as well as Malfurion, will be able to, I think, deal with it very, very well. Uh, Sonya, maybe, could consider a leap here. And then a Vol, you know, Q build burst, the Strafe coming through, and Karazim can always jump. And 
Diablo is going to be great to set up any engage like that, but as this draft is unfolded, I think I'm going to be giving the advantage over to the side of Diamond Hands. I think their draft is a little bit better for how the overall course of the game will go. They can not only dictate fights on their front, but also I think have really, really good counter engage and survivability with the granite aggression that we're so used to seeing. And here's the funny thing, Krabby. In some previous weeks, we saw a lot of priority onto Stitches. I don't think Stitches is bad on this map, and it's a little crazy. Like, what's what's the innovation from Granite Gaming going into Battlefield? Um, they just had so much success in, in previous weeks on Stitches. I thought it was just like, you know, why not keep keep riding that high? Um, we've heard from Crowan, yeah. but, you know, really quickly, Grubby, as we're loading in, maybe a couple thoughts from you? Yeah, I think Stitches is hard to pull off on this map. I think Fala uh, plays around it really well with her bonus movement speed. Uh, so yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I think we may see it coming later on a map sure. like Towers of Doom or Cursed Hollow. The big, I think, final question for Granite, uh, for Diamond Hands to answer: Do we go a Nubarak or Diablo? I thought it was going to be a Nubarak. They went with Diablo. Any insight on that, Crone? Why you think that might be better, or just preferential pick? Uh, it honestly seems to me just like a bit of a preferential pick. A Nubarak is, I think, fine, but there's not too many super key targets that we're going to cocoon. Sure, you could go on like Stukov or, or a Blaze, I think, to make sure that Bunker isn't going to be a, a part of dis, uh, disengaging that. But I think it's really just a preference thing. Um, and Bad Bunny is obviously a very good Diablo player. Yeah, well, I agree. I think so, too. Well, succinctly, Pitt, both of you, thank you so much for your insight, Chrome. We'll see you after the game as we are here into Battlefield of Eternity. This is going to be map one in our first best of five of the day. On the left-hand side, we're going to be seeing Diamond Hands in the blue. Bad Benny on the Diablo. Aki going to be on the Sonya. Funs on the Vala. Valmar on the Malfurion. And Got Filth on the Kerosene. Over in the red, we got Granite Gaming. Fancy Pants playing the Blaze. Skoog on the Murden. Henning playing Stukov. Ultralisk playing the Hanzo, and Ty on the Chromie. Now, Grubby, I haven't given my thoughts on this. I wrote down a Diamond Hands win. I'm feeling I'm feeling the aggression. I'm feeling like this is a rock-hard composition, and it's going to be hard to crack from the side of Granite Gaming. I do like the Blaze, though. Like, there's a, there's a lot of kind of if and or buts, in, and it'll come down to execution. But I like looking at the, the map and the setup here, Grubby. I think this is a little more into Diamond Hands. I agree with you. I think it feels that way. Execution is key, though, like you said. Mm -hmm. There's definitely drafts where I feel confident, whether that ends up being true or not, to call it one way or the other. This one isn't like it. Race is fairly similar on both sides. Folk better on Granite Gaming side, whereas mistake, uh, a mistake safety net is better on Diamond Hands side because mm -hmm. they have double support. I think Muradin can be uh, tough to pull off sometimes with crucial engages and crucial storm bolts. His accuracy is going to be really key. It's, uh, it's down to Skog. That's a 5v4 to get the Muradin instantly. Super cursed. He gets pushed into a corner and deleted. That's plus 10 souls for Diablo. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's auto attack build, Fala. Auto attack build. So that's going to be the Gambit or the Lone Talon, if you will. She'll have 20% bonus attack speed. Every death reduces that bonus by 5%. And you also have your baseline quest, the Creed of the Hunter, which is the number that you're actually going to be seeing scaling up. Every 50 basic attacks against heroes increase hatred damage bonus per stack by 1% up to 5%. 250 stacks total. We'll keep you up to date on those numbers. And I was actually casting a lot of Dreamhack last night, Grubby, and you know what I saw a lot of actually for Battlefield? Was Murden going into this dwarf toss sort of, uh, no sledgehammer at four actually, going into the um, Thunderclap talents at level reverberation? four. Reverberation? So, uh, yeah. I saw Reverberation, also Thunder Burn, I believe is the other uh, uh, talent as well. The, the, zone. the Yeah, the, the purple and the, the blue. I saw those two icons last night at level four. Uh, so it was just, it was really cool to see a little adaptation. That's what I was maybe expecting some of the uh, more Muradin play. Maybe it's just, maybe higher prioritized within the Storm League meta, who knows? But initial siege into top lane is good for Granite Gaming, but Diamond Hands, finding that first kill does push them up a little ahead in experience. Yep, they're a little bit ahead in that. They also got both of the top and bottom camp, which is worth 540 bonus experience. To put that in perspective, mm -hmm. that's about 15% of minion XP that teams have so far. Uh, so that's a nice little extra bonus that you couldn't have got from more minions since those are finite. Top and bot merc, even when they don't push that hard, which in this case is the case because Granite 
did do a good defense, it's worth that bonus XP. That may give you a crucial talent here at some time in the future. Diamond Hands has gotten the Bruiser Camp, so has Granite Gaming. It's racing time or team fight and defending time. And who prioritizes the defense of the Fallen Bruiser? Who doesn't? So far, Diamond Hands engages hard. They get the CC on Muradin. He gets put into the root. He gets attacked and chased, but he gets away. Utilization of Dwarf Block at level one is going to be key for the Muradin here to get that physical armor so that Vala can't just chunk or throw a little bit of extra damage in. But speaking of extra damage, Grubby, it's going to be Air Ally at level four for the Kerazim. Mm. Not only does it reveal an area, but it also gives, I believe, 10, 15%, uh, 50 percent spell power out. That Benny low here, Skoog in the backline, trying to find the damage necessary for the kill. Aki getting very low as well on this Sonya. The there's a huge jet propulsion from Fancy Pants, and that will be a kill on Vala. One stack alone gone 15% will be the remaining that's what happens when you get the gambit talent you can lose it he's lost 5% attack speed from that bonus three lives remaining even without it it's still bonus auto attack damage when you have hatred so it's definitely not all a loss true that's how these talents work but uh, a valuable kill for granite I loved how granite gaming used murder into anchor he was tanky enough not to get blown up they used Blaze to defend Bruiser Camp, while their Bruiser Camp was left uncontested. Because Diamond Hands was in position to try and kill Murden, they had no choice but to put five people on the Immortal and to race, even when under heavy duress and defense. They had no time to rotate bot to deal with Blaze or top to deal with the Bruiser, because their positioning determined it to be so. And Granite did a great macro plus fight. They managed to get the Immortal, and Granite is well in the lead. Top Ford, 60% life. Bottom Ford gonna take some punching too. Mm-hmm. Belt has arrived through bottom lane. Fancy Pants coming in as well. Throws out an oil slick, a little flame stream as well to zone back the enemy team. A few autos into the fort, and I think this will be the disengage from Granite Gaming, who find about, eh, if we're going for percents, about 50% of the fort through this bottom lane. Also to note, Ultralisk on the Hanzo just finished out the simple geometry from level one, did go into the full scatter arrow build at four and seven. And having this done this early into the game, big benefit. Piercing arrow is going to be a massive factor at level 16 but we got to get to that point in the game at this at this time in the game it's going to be let's split off and let's go to the top lane and try and get ourselves a fort as the enemy team was expected to grab the bottom lane camp and they did that was actually a super good read from granite gaming grubby yeah it is and they're just getting value over and over that fort was at 60 percent now it's at 15 percent mm -hmm. and for some reason diamond ants didn't feel like they should do the same thing in the opposite lane chromie is such a great defender of pushes. There's, there's Temporal Loop, there's Time Trap, there's so many spells that can come in on any wow. attackers. Granite is out macroing mm -hmm. Diamond Hands big time. This is great to see them having evolved in this way. And you know what, Ahmed, I feel like a large part of it is Fancy Pants. They look yeah. like a different team since they have him. They're so happy to have him on the main roster now. I believe last weekend uh, Fancy Pants was stepping in, and I'm glad that this is a permanent setup for their roster. This is really, really good so far. I, and, you know, we made the jokes last week. Hopefully we don't uh, jinx Granite Gaming, as I think we actually did that a couple times. But anyways, 10 Talent here will be coming through in a second. And you mentioned that Temporal Loop. Nothing really to deal with that too well, so I'm excited to see what kind of uh, loop loop blow-up you can get from this. I'm assuming also the Vala would be the mass of would be the main target, but now I look at it, Diablo doesn't have full souls yet, so he'd be a great target as well just to get that uh, death timer, that full death timer onto the main tank and be able to step in to the face of Diamond Hands through Granite Gaming, but right now, it's just going to be a uh, quick bruiser camp. Bad Benny trying to scout out with some flame st uh, stops. Yeah, Diamond Hands actually has a little bit quicker uh, the level 10. They start racing, but they won't be able to enjoy this reprieve for long. There's level 10 for Granite as they grab arrow. the camp. That's a big arrow. Malfurial, no, Sonya in a bad spot. Aki trying to get away, but Tranquility keeps him alive. There's still Reign of Vengeance. There's still Leap, but every other ult has been used. For Granite Gaming, only Flailing Swipes is still up. And with double support, Diamond Hands should be able to recuperate, reset quickly, and go back in there. There's only one problem, Bahamut. What's Top that? Camp. Uh oh. Top camp is actually going to be uh, pushed in a little bit, or actually 
Well, Fancy Pants was considering pushing it in. Funds shows up to start clearing things out. That's going to be a dive in from Bad Benny. Flailing Swipe, as you mentioned, still available to maybe push back the enemy team if necessary. But it's not. Not necessary whatsoever. Reign of Vengeance was used by Vala. And just to keep track of heroics, we've got Flailing Swipe and Leap Up. But also, Seven Sided Strike in a moment or two. Bad Benny finds some engage there into the roots, not into the stun for Blaze at least. There's the sleep, there's the loop. Uh, the leap, a lot of, oh, there is the loop. Uh, <laughs> Chromie's trying to just loop people to keep them out of there. There was wow. a furious engage by Diamond Hands, but Granite Gaming defended very well, and they still have lane priority in both lanes. Top lane has a, it's pushed up, but it's gonna be cleared out by the, the wave, it's the, the natural wave. Murden jumps in, huge arrow from Ultralis, setting up the kill into Vala, another Gambit stack gone. Ucky trying to back off in the bottom of our screen, but there's also a fight in the top of our screen as Diablo goes down. It's a triple kill over to Granite Gaming, unless they make it a quad kill. Got Filth makes sad Karazim noises and walks out of top. Wait, I'm sorry, Fancy Pants re-engages under Karazim in top. Top? Uh, top lane, top lane, top lane. Uh, okay. Oh, no, it's not close. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, he's going in. No, but the arrow here from Ultralis, so sick. Yes. Vala is simply not an artillery mage. She's not able to put in safe poke damage without the Q build. She's not able to put in safe poke damage like a Hanto, a Chromie, or a Li Ming. Diamond Hands banned out Li Ming. Didn't go for the Lunara. Granite got Hanzo Chromie, so they can always do the long distance poke. For Vala to deal lasting damage to the Immortal, which was in a very difficult spot, she was forced to step up. Ultralisk abused that. Great arrow and a great engage. Now, the question is, with both lanes pushed against Diamond and the Immortal being oh. in such a spot, why did Diamond Hands force it so hard? That's for later, as another fight breaks out. Seven-sided strike shared between Murden and Blaze. There's a bunker. Aki dropping low. Gr Basically, Ty shooting for free here. Funz gets a huge reign of vengeance. Aki is going to miss the spear back into the enemy team. Fancy Pants trying to put damage into Bad Benny. Uh, still, we have Scoop popping the avatar form, and their souls reset on Diablo. Currently, Belleth hitting for 666 damage baseline, and that's 1,332 damage into structures. Really good damage and siege potential out from this immortal. As Funz trying to avoid losing another Gambit stack, Scoog kind of. Playing, playing a very risky game into a Vala as he was getting chunked a bit. Now Henning had to use the Flailing Swift to save the rest of the team. He is going to get punished for that. Goes down, Fancy Pants in bottom lane, does clear things out. But this is going to be a lot of damage onto the keep. It won't go down, it's but it's going to be on like a sliver. What is this keep at? 2,200, or excuse me, 2,120 HP. 2,120 HP. Sounds like the year where we'll have CCL season 113. Hey, uh, everyone at Jules in... No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Diamond Hands keeps their keeps alive, but it's just by a sliver, like he said, and mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like they n they are able to destroy anyone. Hans and Chromie are too far back. Yep. And Blaze and Murden are sharing seven-sided strike. And then there's always the bunker. They need a wraparound. This might be it, the wraparound. Apocalypse from Diablo comes out, leap from the Sonya. There's gonna be a jump propulsion from Blaze. Bunker comes in as well. Seven-sided strike out as well, but that'll be Sonya first dead. Murden Dwarf tosses in, finds the huge storm bolt into the enemy members. Fancy Pants with a massive jet propulsion. Malfurion goes down. Bad Benny very low, no souls. Diablo goes down. Murden tries to go for the Dwarf Toss. Uh, storm bolt doesn't connect. Funds still a little low here. It's a 2v5 in this bottom lane. And this is looking like keep through bottom should go down with the Impaler camp and the catapult. But Grubby, I don't think I don't think with the death timers that you have right now, Granite Gaming can go core. They have to back off and play Immortal, right? Well, it's the safest thing. Mm -hmm. You could do it, but you would have to farm another five kills at least mm. in order to get the core. And you don't always have your heroic abilities available. It's the least safe way to play it. Granite is going to fall back. They're going to secure their massive lead. Diamond Hands is running into an issue right now. Vala has auto attack builds, which is designed to focus tanks. It isn't designed to get to Hanto and Chromie. If right. she really wanted Hanto and Chromie, she would go Hungering Arrow build. Mm -hmm. And Seven Sided Strike, likewise, is designed to deal with a tank. But one tank, usually, not two. And there is no other damage dealer on the team. Malf, Diablo, 
Sonia with Leap can do some penetration on the back line, which is what no one else wants, actually. Vala and Karazim do not want to kill the back line. So the Leap feels wrong. It should have maybe been front to back. Kill the front line. And that's the issue right now for Diamond Hands. They don't have a backline comp in actuality because Vala's damage does not follow up. Shadow Charge Apocalypse Leap well enough, mm -hmm. like uh, maybe a Mephisto might be able to do. So that's the issue. Can they recover? Storm Bolt from Murden. He pops the Avatar form, able to Dwarf Toss away from the Reign of Vengeance of Vala. Top lane keep did go down to the camp. Temporal Loop going on to Valimar, but it is going to be mitigated somehow, some way. Leap from Sonya goes in. Apocalypse from Diablo is going to be here. Seven Side Strike will be on to Skook. He's taking so much damage. Can he get in the bunker? He can. Got filth very, very low. Goes down. First kill of this engagement. Skook able to get the Dwarf Toss away. Huge repulsion from Fancy Pants as they're basically trading between Fancy Pants and Skook, who is the front line, being able to swap between these two health pools. And now, Core from the side of Diamond Hands, getting shredded by a catapult. This is 10% already off the core. Valimar and crew need to back off, but Skoog and friends, they know what their win condition is, and is basically delaying this out, and they're gonna re-engage once again. Diamond Hands chasing in on two. Excuse me, Granite Gaming chasing in the Diamond Hands. Diablo goes down. Core shielding is gonna start to regrow, but there's more catapults arriving, more damage into this core. This seems like everything has crumbled on the side of Diamond Hands, and Granite Gaming look like the true, true Battlefield of Eternity winners here. I, I, I made the I made the note that they're 0-3 on Battlefield, but Granite Gaming is looking like this is their most comfortable map. Fancy Pants may not be 3 on Battlefield. True. That might be the big one here. His Blaze plays, his hero pool is different than mm -hmm. their previous solo laner. His decision making is different and his accuracy might be different. I haven't seen him die a whole lot either. Fancy Pants is solid as heck. Murden, he's actually gonna take the stun from the Immortal, but he manages to press Avatar quickly enough. Valen deals another 500 damage. He could get into the bunker, but he actually decides to jump out a most fortuitous decision as he is in the clear. He is safe heading from the flank with the uh, flailing swipes as we do have a small disconnect here at this stage. We're gonna try to see if that player can come back. Granite, with such a near insurmountable lead, the whole map is turned red. They have two level leads. They are 11 to two in takedowns, and they've just made their getaway against a desperate team that has their core being pushed behind it. I was just about to note that too, Grubby. The, there's catapults arriving through bottom and top. Sonia just now responding, um, or at least she's back at the Hall of Storms to try and clear things out. So this might scratch the core shielding, but I think Aki uh, should be able to clear things out before any sort of shielding falls. Looking at the minimap as well, it, it just also looks like the members of Granite Gaming are kind of sitting in a um, re-engage potential situation. I'm watching a lot of them move towards the well through bottom lane. While maybe this is the opportune time Time for Diamond Hands to try and race the Immortal down. Though, as I look around the screen, just kind of taking everything in, we got a solid two-level lead for the side of Granite Gaming. And Diamond Hands, not even 16 talents here. Is it scary enough for Diamond Hands to play it safe? Or is it is the map so scary or the potential loss so scary that they need to go for the big play and, and try and step into the face of Granite Gaming without 16 talents here? Feels like it's probably the former rather than the latter of the two ideas. Yeah, I think you can only play, uh, you can only play passively here okay. as, as Diamond Hands. We've been following the action uh, hot as it was unfolding, but we've had someone also that has been able to dispassionately take it all in from the back. Uh, Krone, do you think that there's any way back here for Diamond Hands that is in their control? Yeah, at this moment, I think it seems a little bit too late. I think Diamond Hands, um, really, I think the, the way that this game played out, Diamond Hands played way too aggressive pre-10. There were times where, say, they got the first great kill when um, Granite Gaming opted into a 4v5 fight and uh, Diamond Hands punished them. But after that, Diamond Hands kept trying to go which is way too aggressive. They lost, I think, out in the map in macro sense where Granite Gaming out-rotated them and found multiple kills. There was actually a, a fantastic engage opportunity that happened on the bottom lane. Um, I think it was level like 13 to 15 or so, and that's obviously the point when um, when Diamond Hands wants to fight. It was engaged upon by a flank. The Sonya Leap came through. The, the Diablo engaged as well. But then it was, I think, Ultralisk on Hanzo jumped over a wall to get more distance to then like counter engage Arrow. Uh, I was just oh. like, that was such an insane play, actually. It was a really, really small thing, but that's the impressive stuff that you have to look out for from a DPS player. 
Um, but yeah, as of the game right now, probably heavily, very heavily favored into uh, into Granite Gaming. You uh, you had mentioned at the start when we were looking at the rosters, Crowen, that the one player that you're watching for is Ultralisk, and I think, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I actually just pulled up the stats on my screen. There's like a 16,000 um, damage difference between Funs and Ultralisk. Funs, or uh, excuse me, Ultralisk with like near 51,000 heroic damage in just sub 15 minutes that's pretty good for a hanzo player so uh it's it's exciting to see and the explosiveness of granite gaming in this uh on this map has been really really good and just the shutdown like grubby you made such a good point in the game when i was like oh they're oh and three like it was it was it a was it a were they tricking them all along but then you brought up the great point funds funds came in last week and uh started playing with the roster of granite gaming and they've been looking so good like this is amazing blaze play from funds consistently yeah um for, wait, uh the blaze play from uh fancy pants, oh, fancy yeah. pants sorry sorry <laughs> i'm looking yeah, i'm looking at the admin chat as well and they're mentioning funds so sorry about that but either way yes there's a lot going on mm -hmm. uh, yeah and we're like checking to see what they can fix about the mm -hmm. disconnect situation yeah fancy pants he's played a number of different heroes already and you just get this sense He's not dying in the solo lane. When he gets ganked on, uh, he was already gone. He rotates at the right time. There's a lot of hidden decision making that we don't always get a chance to talk about, but that just ends up rounding out a solo laner's value. It's not always flashy. Sometimes it is. If you come in with the jet <laughs> propulsion, you catch Fala from the flank and you get the kill. But other times it's just not dying. Very important for a solo laner. And so far, Fancy Pants has not been punished. He's just looked incredible in the six games we've seen from him now because there was the whole mm -hmm. full the distance best of five last weekend that was this looks like a win for uh granite yeah uh, it could be i mean the core has got 25 percent damage on it they're currently discussing between both teams about timing and everything just to keep you all up to date on what's happening with all that so we'll be here with you and we're going to be just chatting about the game up until we figure out what's going to happen with these uh with these players but in this battlefield of attorney map like it's just it's the same kind of thing like is it just GG go next, Crowen, or is there a way you can win this ba back? Like, do you end up doing what Grubby kind of said? You play more front to back. You maybe utilize that leap and just shut down the Muradin, move to Blaze, and ah, it's it's hard because as I say all this, you still got a stuke off. You still got a you still you still have so much pressure to deal with. And actually, I'll let you think about that one, Crowen. We're gonna go to a short little break. We're gonna let these players figure things out. We're gonna get the admins uh, on the case, and uh, we'll see you all in a few minutes. Hopefully, we'll be back into. Game number one, Battlefield of Eternity. Don't go anywhere. This is Hero CCL presented by Wisdom. Welcome back to Hero CCL presented by Wisdom. My name's Bahamut, still joined by Grubby, and we're ready to go into that game. Looks like one of the players is unfortunately going to fully DC. Uh, looks like there might be a storm in the area that they're in. We might get some information about that a little bit further on. But here we are. We're back into game. We're ready to go. And unfortunately, the members of Diamond Hands have decided to play with that bot, as we had just mentioned. So let's see what Diamond Hands goes for. They're going to they're gonna ping their Vala. They're going to go in here, Grubby. Is this the play? Is this the godlike Vala? We'll have to see. She vaults right into the enemy side. But it's okay. Yeah. Say okay. And Gotfield gets a dash away onto the bot Vala. Stormbolt will connect. Uh, Gotfield <laughs> unsure if he wants to hearth away, but Vala goes down. <laughs> Bad Betty <laughs> commenting on the Vala. Gotfield yeah. is going to be scatter arrowed to death. Valamar is going to take a little bit of damage here. He goes down as well. The core is already being shredded by catapults. Ucky goes for the YouTube play, but they're shut down. It's a domination from the side of Granite Gaming, and they run towards core and would and will, excuse me, will be able to shut down game number one. Unfortunately, not the way we wanted things to go, unfortunately, but hey, that's still Granite Gaming. They have one game under their belt in the gauntlet, Grubby. This is this is the storyline that we're excited about. You know, Simplicity did it last season. Can the members of Granite Gaming do it this season? They're starting things off looking good. GG's wasn't over to Granite. Wasn't yeah. Simplicity ranked six though, not seven or eight? I thought they were eighth last. Uh, here, I can actually check really quickly. I have the uh, I have the entire thing think, uh, on my other monitor. Did they actually come from the bottom match? I thought they came from uh, second to bottom. You might be absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, they were in. They were seventh last season. Yeah. So right, sixth. 
or six, excuse me. So should, yeah, yeah. So Chili yeah, Mountain yeah. versus Granite, and then it was Simplicity versus Granite, and then Simplicity ran the rest of the Sorry, yeah, yeah. I thought so they were in that first matchup still. It's Wild Heart's position that would represent the Simplicity repeat. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. If Granite did it, it would actually be even sicker, even from further away. But let's talk a bit about Alpha Storm's first performance here. I don't think it's where Alpha Star and Alpha Go are yet. I don't think Vala bot played very well here, to be honest. Humans are still better. Woohoo! Yes, uh, this bot was trash. But <laughs> at the end of the day, this game was over. We try yeah. not to say things in definitives, mm -hmm. only Sith deal in absolutes, but we pretty much felt that this game was going to be over, right? So not a big impact here. What Diamond Hands has going is a funds disconnect. Power went out and he's going to try to go somewhere else to continue playing. Mm. Until that time, it is very likely that Caesar Salad will be brought in, uh, not the food, but the player who is their <laughs> sub and to take place in the roster of Diamond Hands. This is a very difficult development for them. But at the same time, I also want to say it's not Granite Gaming's fault. And I've been in that situation before as Granite even if you feel bad for them, you can't allow yourself to feel that while you're yeah. playing. Nor should you feel elated and lucky. You need to stay unemotional. Elated, lucky, you're gonna make mistakes. It's like, oh yay, the, you know, one of their best players is now missing. No, but nor should you be like, ah, we feel so bad for them, it wouldn't mean anything if we win here. At the end of the day, you're a competitor. Granite needs to stay rock solid with their mentality and not get emotional in any case. And as for Diamond Hands, well, they can have like a sense of no pressure because they couldn't have anticipated this. Mm -hmm. It sucks for them, but they have to play their best and they can play without pressure because uh, this is not how they prepared. Now just play leisurely and hopefully Caesar Salad will show up the way that Fancy Pants has been showing up for Granite Gaming. Could be a potential here. Crow, and I want to get your thoughts on that Battlefield Attorney map. We talked about the end a lot, but I want to get your thoughts on just, you know, kind of what happened in the middle. Maybe what was the turning point that really just let Granite Gaming take the advantage? Was it tens? Was it something else? Uh, yeah, I think as I kind of mentioned a little bit during the break, mm -hmm. I think Diamond Hands were, were not playing the early game as much as they should, as much as they should. And I think it's also the conversation of the, the Vala build, like going auto attack, it's going more, you know, you're playing front to back. But the tanks from the side of Granite were meant to absorb damage. They picked Murden, they picked a Blaze. Like, that is what they do best. In the draft, I was like, okay, the Murden pick, I'm not 100% sure, because Granite loves to play that engaged style, and I wasn't sure that Murden would be able to do that. Turns out they didn't need to. They just, like, <laughs> let Diamond Hands do all the work for them, and then were able to counter-engage in so many scenarios, and to, it just got to be too late. I mean, by the time the DC came through, yes, that's very unfortunate. The game was probably already mm -hmm. over. Uh, at that point, but as Greg mentioned, yeah, Volibot is not it. Volibot not as good as uh, ETC bot or Murden bot of the old <laughs> ages. Gonna have to uh, get the AI working better on that one next time. But uh, I think it was definitely very, very well played by Granite Gaming, and it shows a bit of a diversity in their style, which is something that I'm actually most impressed with from them because they can be the ones to kind of uh, absorb the damage and then look for the counter engages, as opposed to, I think, the majority of the season, it was kind of the reverse. So yeah. a great start to them, and hopefully they'll be able to, um, I guess, take that adaptability move it forward into, uh, into subsequent games, because if they show they're able to do it once, they can definitely do it again. I think they did it really, really well in that last game. This is Quick also... uh, critical question. Please. We thought that the Diamond Hands draft was pretty good. Yeah. Where, where did it go wrong? Like, you think they were just... Deathballing S5, looking for kills too much, didn't play the macro, because I did get that feeling a little yeah. bit. Oh yeah, I think definitely, that's kind of, I should have elaborated on it more, but that's definitely a sense that I got out of uh, the early game over-aggression from Diamond Hands. I think they could have played macro very well, got these small advantages, and then once, as soon as they get a level lead, then, you know, press the GOAT button, press forward, but they were putting themselves in position, actually. Um, a, a bit too a bit too aggressively early on, which means that they didn't get priority on the uh, immortal race. They lost the the early immortals back to back to back, and it was just too hard to come back from that point. So definitely was a unorthodox way of kind of ignoring macro way more than I thought Diamond Hands would actually do. The other thing too to consider is just it. 
I, I think you put it so perfectly. There was just so much damage absorbed. I was looking at some of the talents as well, and there was the Juggernaut um, Coding, I think is the name of the one, at level 16 for the Blaze, which is just spell armor. And you're mitigating the spell power that's being buffed by Kerosene from his level 4 with the Air Ally. And I, I think the entire composition just ate damage and then threw it back. It was very much yeah. a rubber band glue sort of deal. Um, you talked about positioning, and I want to look at the next map because positioning is going to be very critical on our map number two and our first best of five of the day. We're heading off to Towers of Doom. This is going to be the map choice of Granite Gaming as Diamond Hands lost game one. Diamond, Diamond Hands opted for first pick priority, giving map pick over to side of Granite Gaming. And as I've done a lot of my research today, this is the best map for Granite Gaming in Heroes CCL Season 2. They are 4-0 on this map. Might have just wow. cursed them, but maybe this is where <laughs> we see that Stitches come out. Dare I say, maybe, you know, you talked about Leisurely Play Grubby. Is this where we get our Chogal? No. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, GG's. Maybe I'll ask Crow next time. Maybe maybe Crow will will, uh, will allow me to have fun here. But uh, I, I, I I do think that the play style of Diamond Hands will change a little bit here with the uh, the roster swap because I'm actually looking at the lobby right now and I, I just want to jump into this immediately. Caesar Salad will be stepping in for Funds as Funds is trying to I get think get to a location with power, unfortunately. So we'll we'll get into uh, Towers of Doom in just a second. But I guess uh, Crow and as we get ready for this map number two, what are your expectations? from these teams after seeing that game number one. Yeah, so seeing game number one is interesting as well because of the uh, map win rate dynamic as well. It was uh, a bad map for Granite <laughs> Gaming, but still they actually played it super well. But now that this is their best map, right? I think they're they're 4-0 on mm -hmm. Towers of Doom. Um, so I think, I don't want to say it's going to go the other way now. People, teams are going to lose their, their 100% of their <laughs> maps or anything like that. But um, no, I, I think Granite Gaming is obviously feeling confident as well because the, the loss of funds uh, for this game means that Caesar Salad has to fit in and someone has to take up this DPS role. Caesar Salad is, you know, a really good like support and, and, and tank player, I think, but uh, damage dealing not really what they're, I, I think, most well known for. So Diamond yeah. Hands right now has to adapt on the fly. That is the biggest thing. And I think that they can come out with some unorthodox drafts. I think Got Filth has a... Uh, a great hero pool when it comes to these kind of like weird wacky style games that aren't just like you know your standard you know tank dps support kind of thing like maybe we'll see some uh some valiras like some of these uh, melee assassins that, that come through maybe like abathurs or things like that because i think that is actually probably what diamond hands is going to have the most success with it's gonna be hard to adjust that on the fly but would like to see a draft kind of like that I wonder oh, if they're yeah. going to put Caesar Salad on the side lane and bring Aki as a second damage dealer. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. I think you, you you could maybe just run what we saw at the start of CCL. You could run basically triple bruiser, or I guess main tank double bruiser, hyper carry sort of deal with Got Filth. But we're here into the Towers of Doom draft. Let's see what happens. Maybe there's a Vikings player and they just, they just sit four players in the bottom lane and try and play Towers of Doom in that manner. Maybe there's a Sergeant Hammer, which is played more defensively. Uh... I don't know. There's there's a lot of different directions to go to. That's why I love Towers of Doom, but we're ready to go. Map number two in our first best of five of the day. This is the Hero CCL Gauntlet. This is do or die. If you lose this best of five series, that is your season two Dunzos. If you win, you continue your season two and you go up against Wildheart later today. But Stitches, yeah. respected <laughs> out by Diamond Hands. Oh yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's obviously they're doing their preparation. Not wanting to give the Stitches <laughs> over to Granite Gaming is fantastic, especially on this map. I think everybody's talking about like on other maps like, like Towers of Doom, this pick would be especially dominant. So yeah, a great first band there. But now what are the other band's gonna be, right? It's probably gonna be the Lucio again, coming out from Granite Gaming and there it is, make it 22, right? Yep. On the board for that one. <laughs> it's not wanting to play against it. And that's very fair, right? Um, because Lucio is obviously one of the best supports. It's going to be something that Diamond Hands can play very, very well. Very standard stuff coming out here so far. Maybe we'll see an Uther ban. Maybe we'll see a Cassia ban. Um, Chrome, he's actually in a really good spot as well. Maybe this is actually a consideration into Chromie. She could be uh, prioritized early for Granite Gaming. They don't have first pick, but if they don't plan to grab it on the side of uh, Diamond Hands, Mm. No, it's going to be Blaze. Blaze is okay. uh, hes a little too hot right now, Grubby, don't you think? Yeah, he's uh, hes cracked. He's, he's really strong at the moment. Just nearly ungankable, high damage, amazing control, and yeah, just very, very survivable in fights. 
and then he provides tanking as well like tanking capabilities where you lower people's damage with your q or your w uh, he's just strong and they got a taste of fancy pants's place and would not like again here's the answer to that question aki will remain on offlane and like crowen was saying caesar salad's best roles are heal and tank well mm. i think bad bunny will stay on tank he needs that in order to make the calls so that means we might be looking at double healing again. Oh, uh, maybe there's going to be more Karazim Malfurion coming out for Diamond Hands, where Godfield plays a, a hyper carry. All right, Taikus Stukov coming out for Granite Gaming. Taikus one one of the best, I think, damage dealers right now, and is going to be mm -hmm. still like solid into uh, into this perhaps multiple tank bruiser setup that we have <laughs> from from Diamond Hands. I think it is more likely, as I mentioned, to be that double support though. Uh, but we'll have to see. Stuka obviously a great pick as well, I think, from from, uh, from Granite Gaming. It does lean very well into their preferred style of play. But once again, follow up wow. Malfurion for Diamond Hand. So they're running it back while also not having probably one of their best players on the Vala. That's, I don't know. What, what do you both make of this one? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm usually not very optimistic about yeah, yeah. a team uh, repeating drafts in general whether you won or lost yeah and it just looks so similar to the first one it's a little it's Bad a little Uther. it's a little too same samey for me and good call in the uther ban i, I absolutely yep. agree with that as well um kind of maybe i don't know I, it's it's like diamond hands it's like well what's the game plan then you are you gonna play front to back this time like do you not go for the sonia diablos so you you don't have that awkward like maybe do you go for the anubrak but Granite Gaming could go a Nubarak here, which I kind of like a little bit. Good displacement, good interrupt, yeah. a lot of good poke. Beetles are absolutely annoying on Towers of Doom. If you go into Beetle build, you can constantly have them poking around the uh, altar phases, and uh, you can successfully 1v2 delay out. I actually saw that a couple times last night on Towers of Doom. So a Nubarak, I feel like, is going to be prioritized on one of these sides. It's just who's going to grab it, Grubby. I don't like it for granites because beetles allow Vala to keep hatred up. Oh, true. So I didn't think about you that. You don't want to mm -hmm. get any summons into Vala usually. She also kills him pretty good. She can dodge all the stuns with her movement speed and vault and then kill him real big because she's mostly auto attack damaged, um, even though she's kind of hybrid. Yeah. She will yeah. kill any Anubarak that misses his burrow charge. Leo and Murden. Uh, this is a kill the tank composition in a big way for Granite. That means you can't go Diablo, which they know is the favorite tank for <laughs> Bad Benny. He's gonna go with May. We're gonna get a Vikings. Wait, who plays what? Is there gonna be a switch up here? It's it's Aki on Vikings. No, it's Godfield on Vikings apparently. Well, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we'll, say, see, we'll, see, we'll see the swaps coming through. I'm not 100 sure myself, uh, but. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious what Granite runs out the or, or closes out this draft with. But either way, I think that Diamond Hands. Uh, this is kind of what I was wanting them to do with the Lost Vikings pick, right? Get an unorthodox pick in there and have you know run to success. But as we kind of mentioned earlier, I'm not a huge fan of running back the, the Vala Malfurion. I don't think it, it's it's going to be uh, as strong as I think that they're hoping for it. But clearly, they practice this a lot, which is why they're prioritizing this uh, so highly. You know, it was in the two three as well. But Sylvanas round yeah. the draft for Granite Gaming. I, I just, I'm already feeling it's going to be a, a kind of Granite Gaming 2-0 here. But Ooh, yeah, I think yeah. so. Well, what happens is you'll have a mind control coming in. It's going to hit May or Mal for Hagar or Valar or whatever. Then there is no cleanse on that for Malfurion. There's only four heroes to the fight. Yeah. If someone gets mind controlled. They're going to get entombed, drain life, take his minigun. How do you counter? What is your big <laughs> counter play? Is there a horrify to break up that composition? Maybe it's all down to Hogger. Hog wild through Shockwave. But for the rest, Vala is like slow release damage. And then there's like insta pick off against you and you don't have cleanse for that. That feels wrong. I'm I'm not a fan. I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of the Diamond Hands draft. I just I don't feel like it works well. Like I, I just I feel like it's just lacking. Like just just the Vala that doesn't feel like enough to me. Whereas yep. you got a Tychus, a Leoric, a Sylvanas, all of those just shred. Muradin has great setup, and these are heroes that were just played in practice too. So 
Um, Crowan, really quick before you're out of here, who's your call? You, I, or, excuse me, did I miss it? You said a Granite Gaming 2-0? Yeah, I think Granite Gaming 2-0, if it comes down to Diamond Hands having a chance, I think it would be they have to out Macro. They have to not only not die, but then let Vikings get them next P lead and then just take it from talent tier advantages. But unlikely, I think I'm still getting it over to Granite Gaming for this one. Thank you for your analysis, your breakdown, and your knowledge. We'll see you after the game, and we'll see if that's correct, as we've got Diamond Hands in the blue, Aki on the Hogger, Valmar on the Malfurion, Caesar Salad playing the Olaf, Balog, and Eric, the Lost Vikings. May played by Bad Benny and got Filth on the Vala. Over in the red, we got Granite Gaming, who are looking to continue their dominance through Towers of Doom. Skoog on the Muradin, Ty on the Tychus, Henning on Stukov, Fancy Pants playing Leorcan, Ultralisk on Sylvanas. I, I agree with Crow in here, Grubby. I, I really like the draft of Granite Gaming. I struggle a little bit with the Diamond Hands draft and seeing how it works. Maybe that, you know, maybe they'll execute 210% and show us how amazing this actually is. But I'm leaning Granite Gaming. I just like way too much of their draft. What do you think as a little bit of scuffle, no actual kills? I think May is nice into Dykus. He can blind him. And she is a damage reducing tank enemy damage reducing tank that helps to keep uh, Malf and Vala's sustain value uh, up a little bit more. I like Caesar Salad going on the Vikings, so you keep the core four that have him mm -hmm. synergizing the best together, maybe able to get kills. Aki's gonna be part of the four man. He's got dynamite build. He will end up healing some of that percentage damage that comes his way with that level one and seven. Uh, lots of dynamite. It's pretty good poke and setup. There isn't a lot of burst, but there is good scaling. It's AA built again. This time, you gotta focus on killing the front line. You cannot dive. They are not baiting themselves into diving the back line because this draft simply doesn't do that. So in a way, although I remember we were calling the Diamond Ads draft for BOE, the way it actually ended up playing out with Leap, it baited them into a, a focus mm -hmm. dissonance. Now I think there's no dissonance. I think you kill the front line, be it Meridian or Leo, and then you create space. There is the possibility for it, but the cards are stacked against Diamond Ants for sure. Let's talk about Granite. They've got their first blood on a Viking. They're still down in XP a little bit. That is symptomatic for playing against Vikings. That might just be what breaks uh, Granite's chances here if they cannot control Vikings well enough. Viking kill yielding like a hundred experience. I was looking at the breakdown between the the two teams, and it's a little bit of min minion experience deficit. That's really the only difference, but still made up a little bit through kills. And I wonder if that's the way that Granite Gaming goes. No, they're going to do what we all expect. They're going to push in through bottom lane with their Sylvanas. Ty is a little left behind. Spin. Huge. That was amazing spin uh, from Aki right there. Sorry, I was I was just thinking back. I, I casted a bunch of games last night. And I can't remember who it was off the top of my head, but there was someone and I kept singing their praises. They had one of the most amazing bounces two times in a row from basically <laughs> mid to top on Towers of Doom. There was like this really good angle they kept hitting to basically bounce off the initial left side wall. You hit the right side wall and then you bounce off the boss wall and you're kind of in front of your own gate. Like it was done a couple times in a row. I was like, that is so good. Yeah, so I, I was like, I was like, I need to make a note of this for Grubby because he plays so much Hogger. I'm sure he'd love to know about that, but this is going to be a Dwarf Toss from Merc and he's able to back away. No kill to be had from Diamond Hands as our first objective phase is up and available. No seven talent here, but that could come in for the Vikings as Eric is delaying out Fancy Pants. I think, yeah, I think, oh my god, they nearly got the channel there with the delay against Muradin. I think Diamond Hands will focus on defense and scaling. That's where the May comes in as, oh my god, Ultralis dives deep, goes one for one. That's always in favor of the Vikings team. Mm -hmm. Good job so far by Diamond Hands. Bad Benny goes from the side. Great route, point blank on Malfurion as the first eight shots go to Diamond Hands. And not only that, <laughs> but this little cretin has stopped Fancy Pants from doing a fancy cap. He's so swift, he's so brave, and Ty is on an island. I don't think you make it out of this one here alive, my friend. Uh, Ma Valimar auto-canceling, essentially, as uh, Caesar Salad won't be able to interrupt any further. So the 40 dream is dead with the Viking, as this is going to be four shots into the core of Diamond Hands. I wasn't expecting it to go this way for the first objective, Grubby. I thought the team fight was going to be stronger from Granite Gaming. While I look at that 1v1, you said that there's the value for the Vikings through that kill. The other thing that I do want to note, though, Granite Gaming did technically come out a little bit with a, a gain, per se, from that trade, Vala for Sylvanas, as one of the Gambits stacks 
are down for Vala, so she only has the 15%. Oh, that's true. So I, I, yeah, I just, uh, like, there is <laughs> yeah, still, like, true. there's a little bit of a gain still for Granite Game, but I do agree with you. There's a lot gained for the Viking team in Diamond Hands. Uh, so far, Godfilth is unleashing holy hell on everyone. Ty is actually sequestered into this little nook and cranny. That's a staggering blow with the root from Valamar. Diamond Hands looks renewed this game compared to the previous one. I guess it's nice when your Vala is a human, not an AI, but also this is a bigger lead than they had uh, from the previous game. Mm -hmm. This is working. We didn't know that they have it in their playbook. Our, our judgments gets colored by the fact that Caesar Salad wasn't part of the main roster, but so far Diamond Hands is squashing our expectations. I squashing and then some i would say like they're they're really showcasing good momentum good rotations good communication as well as we get into a second objective phase speaking of communication you want to jump into some comms we forgot to do that last game <laughs> yeah well you know we don't have to do it every game sometimes. that's true true we just want to talk all the time <laughs> so let's, let's listen out uh, how diamond hands are vibing together into diamond hands we go i'm just gonna think though yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the Viker and Vala. Thank you. I'm on both caps, don't I? That's good. Can you get bots to the Viker too? Yeah, I got, I got bot. I, got I can back, they're gonna go in now, they're coming, they're coming. I can back Olaf for a top two. People run. Where is Rico? I gotta get there. Oh, he's there. Wait, wait, I wanna no, tap. No, some for five. Uh, they're gonna go bot, we should do it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of slow actually. Uh, careful of like here though. Yeah, I watch I'm not there. I'm not there. Playing through mid with the uh, Eric. I'm not Leo's mid. Camps. Or is he's 20? So let me show. Them. Uh, yeah, I got mid. I got, I got mid soak. I got mid soak. Where are the white people? Yeah, I think they are boss actually. Yeah. That's what I'm just for sure boss. Oh, they're wrong. Oh, Leo's top. I'm doing our camp. <laughs> Good vibes coming off from the side of uh, Diamond Hands. Good communication and rotations, what the Vikings are doing, who's where on the enemy side as well. And from that objective phase, 10 shots will rain into the Granite Gaming core. Diamond Hands, they're looking a lot better in this game number two. <laughs> as, uh, a couple sappers get forced over the wall on top. That's three. Three sappers versus the the 10 damage from the Bell Tower phase we just got. I, I think Diamond Hands is okay with that trade. Oh yeah, they're totally fine with that. Was it ten though? Uh, it was eight. They didn't have. I thought all they the had. Yet. Oh, did they? I thought they still had their top left. Anyways, it. My control from Sylvanas onto Bad Shockwave, Benny. Shockwave, Blizzard. Ooh. Okay. Shockwave, loot horde, Blizzard, staggering blow, deletion. Diamond Hans is popping off. He just. <laughs> what? what? Nah. Godfield, perfect. He got just enough straight Sappers? arrows into Sylvanas. That'll do, he said. Oh, he tried to jump while in a route? Awkward. Sappers went over the wall. Vikings will harass this Leoric. <laughs> Eric. Yeah, I, I, can, I can literally hear Vi uh, like Eric. Yeah, exactly. Caesar Cell gets it's four wrong. shots in. <laughs> I heard that in their comms as well, and I was trying to hold my giggle because I wasn't muted, but... Okay, traded alter phases. Traded objective phase, excuse me. 13 yeah. talent tier advantage slightly here for Diamond Hands. That'll be gained in a minute for Granite Gaming. Grubby, is this map spiraling out of control? Are the Vikings just putting too much chaotic pressure on the map into Granite Gaming? Looks like it. It looks like nothing is holy anymore, Bahamut. Predictions mm -hmm. are overturned. Perfect records are squashed. Gauntlets are socks. I don't huh? know what's going on in this knockout phase. <laughs> Everything is different than we expected. The 4 0 record for Granite on TOD. And you've got the 0 3 record on BOE. Everything is changing, and I don't know why. This is why I don't do stats, Grubby. I was literally doing the stats this morning and I go, <laughs> I was I was literally making these notes and I wrote down a couple of these things and I was like, as I was writing, and I was like, watch me, watch me bring this up on broadcast, get all hyped about it, and then it just be like <laughs> <laughs> oh, Just good. So stats are no guarantee for the future. It offers yeah. us perspective, though, on the it, yes. work the teams True. have been putting into mm -hmm. it, uh, into their preparation, which is fantastic. It is but really good. Are those, work, yeah. Where are those mm -hmm. mind control hits? The lead to kills. One. We've had one, but it didn't even yield to a kill. It was just. A little bit of, uh, hey, I'm walking towards the front of the enemy team. Big and tomb from Fancy Pants onto Bad Benny. Pops the cryo freeze. There will be a nice one in the back line. Hogger pops the, uh, the uh, 
Anyways, a lot of Shock stun damage. Horrible. Thank you. Staggering blow. Blizzard. Roots. It was a great route by Valimar. And Diamond Hands manages to save their May from an Entomb Engage. The only things are left are Odin and Boat. Yep, Boat. As Odin, of course, is going to be a nice sieging tool. But it will make it harder to get their kill on whichever target they mind control. Which, by the way, is the heroic that comes back the quickest. Can somehow Granite play around that? Savannas needs 10 seconds more. Tychus is being dropped low. They go for May. May, a crucial overstep. But did they create enough space? They did. Maybe it's not an overstep. This was an intentional risk. Mind control will connect on to Valimar. He does go down. As you were mentioning, though, Grubby, maybe people might not have noticed that there was a bell tower phase that the Vikings got. So you're trading two yeah, kills yeah. for four damage into the enemy core, 29 to 13. I don't want to call it just yet. There's been some signs of life from Granite Gaming in this uh, post-13 era of, of this Towers mm -hmm. of Doom game. Maybe they're starting to run... Uh, win things back, but I feel like this is kind of that critical moment on Towers of Doom. You need to start making plays inside of Granite, otherwise you are just going to get cornered like the Tychus earlier in bottom lane and get shut down two times in a row. Maybe it's the case, maybe not. Let's see what happens here as the game does progress out with 16 talent tiers on both sides, 6 to 3 in kills, members of Diamond Hands leading in said kills, bosses up and available, sappers pushing in through bottom. Retroactively, I feel like maybe it was not Mm -mm. value for diamond hands two kills for four shots they created space but they also lost the bottom tower it can yeah. be a real pita bread in order to get this back the raw ice wall nearly it was a bit of a slow misses let's say 60 seconds cooldown granite gaming keeps control of bottom forward and that makes it much easier for leo to stay even with the vikings in terms mm -hmm. of soap this is hard to get back with Vala. Good moves though by Godfilth. He is not getting caught as much as Fons was last game. Though then again, there isn't a dragon arrow coming from the Wild Wild West <laughs> either. Just a mind control from here and there, which is a little more limited in range and effect. Granite Gaming uh, has this bottom lane bell tower plus the sappers, and we're looking at a triple altar phase, which if all three are grabbed by the side of Granite Gaming, would make the game 14 to 13 in core HP. Ty, five shots from bottom lane. Sylvanas, five shots from the right hand side. Fancy Pants forces back Caesar Cell. That's gonna be Olaf dead, a Balog dead as well from Murden. There's the play it again from the Vikings. Savannah's gonna try and shut this down as best as she can. Fancy Pants, can he get the channel? He didn't get the channel in time, Grubby. Oh, it was so close. And big scuffle, one of the Vikings goes down. Fancy Pants' channel got banned as he doesn't get the channel. Still though, Diamond Hands put an awful lot of prioritization in getting that bot forward back instead of fighting over any of the altars. They lost two. There's a mind control on Vala. He gets cleansed, but it doesn't do anything. The goggles, they do not sing! <laughs> the goggles, they do not sing! The acid, it burns! <laughs> Fancy Pants gets the channel, and this is all three altars going over to the side of Granite Gaming. As I do my caster math, so five shots from bottom, five shots from right, only four from the left-hand side as that was converted back over. And this is what I was talking about, Grubby. Oh, yeah. This is what Granite Gaming needed to do. They needed to start putting pressure into Diamond Hand's face, and we have found parody almost on this Towers of Doom game. It was looking like an impossible hill to climb for the side of Granite, but they got their mountaineering shoes on, and they're ready to go. Got their gauntlets on their feet as mm -hmm. they are indeed in the driving seat. Now, the question, of course, is how does Diamond Hands get back into it? Or did they lose a crucial stage when they sacrificed two players to get the uh, tower shot, losing bot forward? You want things to go slowly with Vikings, usually. When you're four on four, it's fine. You have talent lead. But four on five hard force while capping is maybe something they couldn't afford. They're now actually going for the boss. Can you believe I it? Know. I don't know about this. I don't know about this because the enemy team kind of showed in their rotation to this top lane. T Tychus gets a commandeer Odin, has the grenade. Skoog dives in with the Murden. There's going to be a lurking arm from the Stuka. Big spins from Hogger as there's so many members on this point. Hogger's fighting the spins. Okay. There's an ice wall. The Members of Diamond Hands get the four shots from the boss, but can Granite Gaming punish this engagement? Bad Benny, very low. Valimar with the silence. We have Aki split from the team. He goes down. Leork finishes out Mithril Mace. Oh, that mind control was so very close. But here's the big thing to note, Grubby. Big thing to note. Top lane bell tower converted. Yeah. Granite Gaming left this mid lane bell tower at like 10% HP. The Auric will get this converted or maybe the minion wave because you still have a little bit of altar spawning time so you don't want to convert it immediately. So top lane actually will get reconverted. Mid lane goes down, bottom lane being pushed in. 
Granite Gaming, they're gonna look to have parity on this map almost when it comes to yeah. bell tower shots. Yeah, let's see, that that one got converted. They try to go for Leoric. Vala actually very fast, right? Like yeah. she's got 100 stacks Ooh. of damage. Good, just good size stacks. Yeah, Hot Pursuit is gonna get the kill though. So that's a kill on Leoric. That's pretty much level 20 on lockdown. Six shots go over for Granite. Parity has been reached, level 99. Ooh. So now the big question is, once Vikings are expected to become a full-fledged teamfighter, will they be able to do so? We look at the Viking talents. They have large and in charge. Hanka burning Olaf. You've got... Uh, that's pretty much the extent of their team power together mm -hmm. with spin to win. Nice double storm bolt. The damage on May. Minigun, mind control. Bad Benny dropping real low. There's six sappers here. Flailing swipes gets one sapper over the wall. There's a third swipe. Sappers are getting attacked. Great job of defense. There's the shockwave. They're going to try to kill Stukov. They've got it. The defense here by Diamond Hands against Granite Gaming. Mind control on Hager. There's a nuclear missile. Boom, 800 damage. Ultron is going deep. He gets a kill. But there's the strafe. Godfield going in, gets the Tigers, gets the Sylvanas. Godfield, auto attack talent against Skog, against two tanks. He gets hit Ooh. by, he gets hit by the Leoric. Everybody's dying. Everyone is just being traded back and forth. The Vikings play it again, and it is an absolute massacre over this bottom lane. Bell Tower engagement over some sappers. Two sappers went over the wall, and it's 7 to 9 in core HP. A single Bell Tower will be spawning here in 25 seconds. But look at the death timers, Grubby. They're all over the place. I do think, though, that Granite Gaming can get a few members in position. The biggest X factor in all this, Vikings. Vikings are just so annoying. Will it be enough? I, 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 don't, I just, I don't know, Grubby. I don't know. This is absolute insanity. You said Eric to interrupt. Stukov is the first one back because he was the first one dead. But Leoric is returning as well. There's Fancy Pants as Eric continues to take pot shots. <laughs> David and Goliath. <laughs> Eric dodging, people running for all he's worth. There's Stukov. That's three members on the field for Granite. Bell Tower is converted. A little bit of damage onto Bad Benny. There will be a Wraith Walk, I think, from... Oh, no, it's oh. a stun onto this, uh, onto Fancy Pants. He's going to get Chain CC'd. He goes down. But the Bell Eric. Tower still gets channeled. Oh. Eric doesn't interrupt. How? I have no idea, actually. Maybe... He's maybe. full life. You know what? Maybe he was just in the bush and Caesar Salad was going for the focus onto Leoric, potentially, and just misplayed the Viking Eric. I, I, think I that's don't know. probably what happened. He did do the stun and the spin to win, and they got the Leoric kill and so on and so forth. I just... Maybe it's the zoning by Muradin, but Granted, very oh. happy, of course, with that channel. There's a mind control on Hogger. Combo. Savannah's trying to get away. Ultralisk. Caesar Salad trying to run these Vikings away. They have played again in, in like literally a second. They will be able to get the play it again value. Ice Wolf comes out from the May. Commandeer Odin out from Ty. Bottom lane Bell Tower does get converted over to the side of Diamond Hands. Ultralis went for the mind control, won't be able to connect, but he, excuse me, he has Call of the Dark Lady, which will basically put it on a 15 second cooldown, almost back up three seconds on that one. Can go fishing on the side of Granite Gaming as Ty is getting chunked a little bit by Vala as she finishes a third stack on the level one creature of the hunter and i actually didn't look at this grubby really really quick vala has five percent off of that uh level one questing talent or excuse me the level one gambit talent five percent remaining from this yes. but he also has built up another uh bonus st damage stacks may gets attacked there on the right side in the meantime we've got hogger into tychus it's not a good matchup hogger goes down no counter kill there yet oh there's a counter kill on leoric that mm -hmm. doesn't have the same value vala very low one of the vikings goes down P Vikings can't play it right now as they have 43 seconds on that one. Sappers and bottom will be... They're going to attempt to force these in, but I think Henning has the control on this. Gotfield is going to get dove in. A little bit of flank might work out. Vikings coming in. They are trying to set up for the channel onto these altars that are about to spawn. Icewell comes out from the May. Caesar Salad is going to try and throw a Viking onto this. No, it's just a big team fight. Vala goes for the strafe. No death siphon at level 20. Caesar Salad can't find the kill. Oh my god, he does! No, it was the... Uh, the, the Vala finds the Sylvanas kill, but Vala goes Capping. down. That's the last one. The cap from Bad Benny isn't interrupted. Oh, yes, no. the lurking arm is on point. And here's the thing, Grubby. You only need one bell tower. You only need, need one. one. Valamar's trying to get in position. Granite Gaming has done it. Wow! Real back and forth, Bahamut, but they have done it. The final three shots come in. They keep their perfect record on this map. 5-0 now in Ooh. a scintillating match between the two. Great job.
That was an explosive Towers of Doom game. We got to get Chrome back in on this one already. Is this the way that Towers of Doom should be played, or should it just be four DNOs, my friend? Oh man, that game was an absolute banger. And you know, part of me is glad that my prediction to Granite winning came through, but I don't really feel good about that one. Not at <laughs> all. It was so, so back and forth. And Diamond Hands actually had the game in their hands very decisively and just threw it away, right? It all came down to where they traded two members to get not, you know, just, just one altar phase through, but what did they also give in return? It was going to be Matt Pressure bottom fort allowing uh, granite gaming to get an xp advantage a massive xp advantage at that which they propelled to level 20 were able to then take the game you know uh, in in their favor and, and went out on it but that was i mean that's a lot to break down right uh, i guess i want to also take a step back and start to i actually i was writing down notes as this game was going on and i actually i have a note written down that says you know, I don't want to be VM to funds, but this game begs the question, should this roster of Diamond Hands have been in the whole time because of how they played from levels mm -hmm. like 1 to 16? They played the game so cleanly, and Got Filth is always a treat to watch on these massive impact carries. Caesar Salad came in, probably wasn't expecting to play today. I mean, I'm not sure about that, but um, you can't really yeah. predict funds having these issues. But Caesar Salad came in played the flex pick of a Vikings, and for the most part of the game, looked actually really good. There was that one misstep down the bottom altar where Eric didn't stall. I think that definitely should have been stalled. Um, there's mm -hmm. really no question about that. But uh, overall, Caesar Salad played that game well. It really was just overall team decision-making that they let on the back foot. But being able to take that game from Vikings and have the insane kill advantage that they had, just absolutely well played. It, really a lot of pressure now on Diamond Hands to come back as being down 0-2, not sure if funds can be back in for the next game, but just having to swap up so much. Granite Gaming looking like they're in very, very much dominant position. The 2-0 lead, probably going to look to make it a 3-0 here, but we'll see. We'll have to see, and we have to take a small break so we can get these players rested up, get them a little bit of water. In that break, I encourage you to hit exclamation point awards as we are going to be having an award show later in July. And this isn't like you have to sit there and type things out and look up a bunch of things to nominate. That's already been done for you. You just click on the link, you go to the Google survey, and you push the buttons of the things that you like the best. And if you're like, wait a minute, I don't know these four clips. We've done a wonderful thing for you where we put all the clips next to the nominations as well. So if you're like... Man, I wanna I wanna see Lobber curse Granite Gaming on Sky Temple. That clip's in there. You can definitely click on that one and laugh at that one with all of us. So make sure you hit exclamation point awards in chat. And lastly, exclamation point prize pool. If you'd like to check out the custom Macherino page and donate towards the prize pool, we're at thirteen thousand four hundred fifty-four dollars and six cents. Someone get rid of that six cents, please. As <laughs> you have supported this here a CCL tournament so much thank you from the bottom of our hearts for supporting here ccl and the here's the storm community but as i said we're gonna take that short little break we'll be back with more hero ccl presented by wisdom Welcome back to Hero CCL, presented by Wisdom. My name's Bahamut, and I'm still joined by the wonderful, the amazing, and the best players in Heroes of the Storm. If you didn't know this, I'm joined by Grubby and Crowen, two amazing Heroes of the Storm casters and players as well. How was your break, my friends? Did you have a nice little uh, leisure stroll, or did you just sit and just stare at these stats waiting for game number three, Grubby? I just wrote a 200 word essay. Whoa! I needed to finish it, and I want to focus on watching right now. That APM from playing StarCraft, WarCraft 3, that really plays into that. But Crowen, how was your break, my friend? You ready for this game number three? Oh yeah, definitely ready. I was I was sitting here stewing on what we've seen so far. My mind's going crazy trying to break all of this down and be able to present it all to you fine folks at home. And uh, I mean, <laughs> I haven't really <laughs> lands in on anything super decisive, to be honest, because I, I gotta feel for Diamond Hands in the position that they're in because I'm going to uh, assume, you know, I don't know the exact prep work that Diamond Hands uh, did into this, but obviously it's playoffs. It's the last chance to, you know, be the, the CCL season two victors. So you're going to do your homework, but they can't have expected this this to have transpired and probably, you know, weren't expecting to have to put Cedar Cell it in. But they're doing an okay job of it right now, I think. Got Filth has super, super big shoes to fill, being the, you know, the, the sole, you know, damage dealer in that last composition and probably expected to see on a you know hyper carry in the next game but god filth is playing these scenarios well and if it's anyone that can do it i think from this position it is god filth honestly one of my favorite players 
in the CCL. So excited to see how he can help lead the team into a potential reverse sweep, maybe come back starting here in game three. We've had a few reverse sweeps in season two of Hero CCL. So let's find out where that potential reverse sweep could start for the side of Diamond Hands. We are going to be heading to the map of Infernal Shrines. This will be the map choice of Granite Gaming as Diamond Hands has opted in for first pick priority as the losing team from Towers of Doom. Now I looked at this during the break really quickly, Grubby, and more stats for everyone at home. I wrote bad map for Granite Gaming, but it's a one in four map for Granite Gaming. They have not had the best time at Infernal Shrines and they have chosen to take us here. Though I looked through all my stats and Granite Gaming hasn't really had the best start of their season as they sit in eighth, eighth place, but Infernal Shrines, I I think this is playing into the macro, the, the even the micro. Like I think Granite Gaming just has a really good understanding and a really good grasp of what they want to do as a team and how to play against this Diamond Hands roster. It's it's almost like any time that Granite Gaming's back against the wall, they can just find a way to kind of uh, reverse or flip over the enemy players and put them into the wall. As this is map number three, will Granite Gaming take a 3-0 in this gauntlet game? Or as Crone was saying, will the members of Diamond Hands start the reverse sweep? Let's what, see what happens here, Grubby. Maybe a little thought from you as well as we're getting into Infernal Shrines? Yeah, Granite has been removing uh, mostly Uther and Lucio, mm -hmm. which are great at saving someone in a, in a pinch that's being attempted to be blown up. Last game we saw that blow up comp attempt with mind control and so on. And I feel like they did a really good job, Granite, not falling too much behind in XP against Vikings, despite losing some fights. And then they just waited for a mistake, mm -hmm. and that happened. They couldn't really force, but they waited for a mistake and it happened. When you have that quiet confidence and the patience not to do anything too risky, you're in a good spot. Granite still has a lot of lethal weapons going into this. They've got a Mayev player, mm -hmm. who also played Hanzo really well, who can play Kerrigan. <laughs> and they have a Stitches player in Skog. And then Fancy Pants on the side lane, on Blaze. You can't ban it all, and Diamond Hands is considering which one they remove. Granite will have Blaze available. In the past, Play day one, two, and three. They pretty much had one or two weapons, or none. They've grown far beyond it, and they deserve their 2 0 placement now. But Diamond Hands is scaling into this best of five. Oh, don't we all remember the time when we went to uh, to Garden of Terror and we had a Murky, an Asmodan, a Deathwing from Granite Gaming? Granite Gaming definitely has grown throughout this season. I was actually looking back at my notes and I was like, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was that one that was that one game, huh? That did exist at one point, but it's a first pick blaze from the side of Diamond Hands, not allowing Fancy Pants to get onto that jet propulsion flaming hero. Um, Crow, and I was actually thinking about this earlier, and I want to get your thoughts on this. What are your thoughts on a beekeeper ski skin for Blaze? I think it's perfect. Like, his, his model's perfect for it. I think so. I think that actually <laughs> worked out really, really well, Baha. I'm, I'm here with you. I'm, I'm giving you, you, the, giving you. you the, the thumbs up on that one. Uh, but also <laughs> giving Diamond Hands, think, a bit of a thumbs up in this draft as well with the Blaze pick, because yeah. not only is it denying um, the side of Granite Gaming and, and Fancy Pants off a fantastic pick, but it also works really well with the map. Uh, Infernal Shrines, you know, a lot of uh, Blaze gives good wave clear and good team fight as well. Uh, Blaze also really safe, so probably not going to be a heavy, um, you, you know, heavy detriment going into this stage. Just for Granite Gaming. If Blaze is hooked, generally you'll be able to survive. It'll throw down a bunker and whatnot. Uh, but the Vala also denied from Granite Gaming. You see Diamond Hands run it two times in a row. Two times is a trend. So you're going to do something about it. Well, I think also really good on this map as well. Not most amazing into Cassie, but can still definitely hold her own. Um, so I'm excited here, and I love seeing the stitches out from Skog. On the note of Vala, Grubby, I actually saw a lot of Vala last night, uh, and one of the things that I saw was actually the uh, Fire at Will, or the W build for Vala. Now, this was more on maps like Infernal Shrines and Tomb of the Spider Queen. We've talked about this to an extent about how it was nerfed. I believe the scaling went from 4 to 2. You do get that buff of 40 extra damage after 20 stacks, but the average at the end of the game is still a little bit lower. I feel like on Infernal Shrines, though, you still can go this Fire at Will with the Arsenal at level 4 to be able to get a little bit of poke yeah. damage onto these shrines but maybe there's a world where we do go into the hungering arrow because you were mentioning earlier in the first map hungering arrow it scales its burst ability scales really hard as it was buffed from six scaling damage to seven yeah it, it i know that it may seem strange and people in chat are like hungering build sucks i yeah. don't think it does i, I, I think I, it's a little I'm bit right there with you. undiscovered 
Map objective wise, it's multi shot. Yes. Easy yeah. of stacking, quickly into your hatred, which also means quickly into your movement speed. Multi shot is and was in Old Vala the safest. And it, maybe that's what we're going to see here to play around the map. But it's not crazy to imagine a hungering build. Hook, Polymorph, Arrow, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Vault, Arrow, and yeah. then at level 20, it's Arrow, Vault, Arrow, Vault, Arrow, Vault, and you're doing like <laughs> 7,000 damage. It is possible. Well, we'll see which one it's going to be. It is double healer from Diamond Hands. They're going to embrace this time Caesar Salad on his main role. And also, I was thinking before this match, if Godfield is the solo damage dealer here, which you guys were talking about, then it's got to be Cassia. Vala has not been working out as well. Who's the other hyper carry in the Nexus? Go Cassia. And it makes sense. I think this is the best thing Diamond Hands can be doing, can be doing with the cards dealt to them. All righty. We see this Maev as we were talking earlier about this. Now, Crone, we got the big picture in front of us. You want to break this down? Maybe give us a little prediction on who you think takes game number three Infernal Shrines? Yeah, I, I think that... Um, I would think if Diamond Hands was allowed to pick Vala again, I actually think they would have. It was, however, denied from Granite Gaming. Cassia is a good pick, but relying on this solo carry Cassia with Stukov and Anna, I don't think are quite the best to complement her with. So, I mean, yeah. I'm here back in the broadcast, so it means it must, must, must be a 3-0, right? So oh. I'm going to give it over to Granite <laughs> Gaming once again on this one. Um, and I For think... those that don't know that reference, when Crone joined us earlier, everything was 3-0, and there were some complaints where the games were too short for him to... Literally, it was literally we week yeah. one. Literally week one, every single game in week one was 3-0. So uh, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. have told the scriptwriters explicitly no 3-0s this weekend. If we get a 3-0, back when you're fired, I'm sorry. Anyways. Uh, Crow, and thank you for your breakdown and your analysis. We will see you after game number three as we are here into Infernal Shrines, ready to go. Let's see what happens here. On the left-hand side, we got the members of Diamond Hands in the blue. We will be seeing Valimar on the Stukov. We've got Caesar Salad on the Ana, got Filth on the Cassia, Bad Benny on the Leoric, and Ucky on the Blaze. Over in the red, looking to kick off their... 3-0 and their run through the gauntlet bracket and maybe go up against Wildheart later today. We got Granite Gaming in the red. Alchalisk on the Maiev, Ty on the Vala, Skoog on the Stitches, Henning on the Brightwing, and Fancy Plants playing the Rexar with Misha, as always, playing Misha. Now, Grubby, I'm leaning to a Granite Gaming 3-0 here. I don't want it to be, but they're just way too dominant as we get a hook immediately onto Bad Benny. What are your thoughts here? As I think we just have a little bit of a scuffle in mid. No real potential kills. I might be eating my words, actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I think role-wise, Diamond Hands is doing what they can. Uh, Cassia can be a good hyper carry. She doesn't usually kill Stitches very well, though. And while you can try to ignore the Stitches, it's usually good if someone can kill him. And, of course, Leoric can kill Stitches a bit, but Cassia should not be focusing on Stitches. And therefore, who is Cassia going to be focusing on? Well, Vala or Maev. Who can follow up on that? Maybe not Leoric. That's the hard part here for Diamond Hands. But... Enough analysis, let's yeah. embrace the glory of the game as Granite Gaming could be headed towards a 3-0. And yeah, Anna Stukov, I mean, I don't think we've ever seen this in, uh, in CCL in general. Kind of like it. We'll see how it works out. Usually it's like an Ana and an Uther or something like that with like a Kerrigan sometimes, but that hasn't even really been a thing for this season. Uh, I looked over at our admin chat. I just want to let everyone know at home, Funz is actually traveled to his grandmother's house. And if we can get into a game number four, if there is a game four, I believe he'll be joining. So uh, it's on the shoulders of Diamond Hands to take us to a game number four, but got filth. He's getting so much healing from the Ana and the Stukov, the avoidance value coming in, face shift in from Brightwing, Caesar Salad, now the new target, Skoog. Do you have a hookup and available not for a second so no hook goes out but the camp will be invaded stolen away hook set up for scoob can he find someone in this bush there's going to be a number bind there's the hook onto got filth polymorph comes through this is the one two punch we are talking about but it seems like there's a few blocks from got filth as no kill still found into this cassia it's win-win for fun so either he can end up playing or he can listen to grandma stories like either way a grandma got visited by a grandson mm -hmm. which is fantastic oh so it's a win-win 
uh, in the meantime, we get Caesar Salad to play here. And while the heals on the Godfield have been impressive, and with that 30 armor being so valuable, no one really getting threatened on the side of Granite Gaming. Right wing healing pulses come out and heal out a good measure of that uh, Lightning Fury from Cassia. But where is the follow up? Where's the finisher? Where's the setup? It's gonna be down to Blaze. I think it's gonna be down to the late game as well. Cassia will take another boost. Someone gets buried alive. This is a very late game. Uh, and then you just blow everyone up with that angle. I mean, the, we live in a world where absolutely this map goes to 20 talents here quite often, so I could see it happen. Unless Granite can just dominate and run things down. There's no Sylvanas to lock down towers, and the siege potential is still decent for Granite, but it's not as explosive as like a Sylvanas with like a Grey Main. Like that, I feel like would be like, okay, maybe this might be a faster game. But now, Vala's sustained damage is pretty good, and Maiev has a little bit of poke and control, and I think that's the direction Granite wants to play into. They want to poke, control, and burst down anyone they can get with an Umbra Bind plus hook combo. Misha, what? Why are, you too, why, why, why are you taking shots there? There's a minion wave. I mean, she got orders. She's a trained animal. Uh, they don't really have a choice. Her next meal de determines uh, her uh, prioritizations. It's sad, but it's necessary for the war effort here. As Granite Gaming does get the entire oh. mid wall while losing the objective. There's a hook on Godfield. No Umbral Bind. Ultralis does get a good bit of damages. Jumps over the Jet Propulsion. And the Punisher goes to Diamond Hands. Let's see what they can get with it. It's an arcane Punisher. We might have missed it, but I did I did think I thought I caught it. It was uh I swear there was an Umbra Bind onto Got Filth, which was kind of setting up the hook. Because it's it's always been those Umbra Bind setups consistently. As the Punisher jump is baited and avoided with the uh with Ty with the vault really well played from him. As this Punisher gets burned down, the fort front gate will fall, and a few scratches onto the fort through this top lane. Umbra Bind from Ultralist connects onto Ucky, but there's not enough. Hook from Stitches is available, but a min minion wave will kind of block said hook. Needs to be cleared out. Maybe we're looking for that hook now. I'm just, oh, there it is. I keep watching the cooldown on Scoo because I want to know, is like, is the hook ready? Do we have that gank potential? Not for another nine seconds. Yeah, and Skog definitely knows a lot of cool engage angles with that mm -hmm. hook. He showed some fantastic ones on Towers of Doom a couple of weeks ago. Since then, teams haven't allowed him to have it. <laughs> Let's see how it goes this game. Because he, he's got it again, and Granite looks super lethal with this. A match for pretty much anyone, except just based on gut feeling, maybe simplicity. Oh, 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 bad Benny gets caught out in bottom lane from the, uh, they use their Wraith walk and just read by Skoog. The angle, as you were mentioning from Skoog, was on point to read exactly where Leoric would end up. And that'll be first blood found in the Leoric. We've had three to four gank attempts on to got it just bleed. doesn't happen. I, I get, okay, all right, that's fair, that's fair. I just, I looked up at the top of the screen and I, I didn't consider, sorry. Mechanical bear. <laughs> sorry, sorry everyone. I'm sure there's, there's some angry, there's some red angry faces in chat, it. yeah. I feel like it. This is uh, uh, okay. Ults, spray, <laughs> containment, this gorge, blink, heal, and Bors. I like it. I like it. Gorge, strafe, uh, containment. It's just you containment just the stuke off Anna. Gorge someone away. Both of them. One of them. One of them. One of them. Like, uh, sorry. Yeah. You you choose one. Maybe gorge the other. That's what I'm kind of yeah. thinking right now. Is like you, you can tame it just a stuke off gorge. Wait, oh. did we did we just hear gorge, gorge on the right in the bottom? Bot lane, bot lane. Great entomb oh. to slow nice it down. Nice entomb. Mhm. Mm Ooh, that hook onto Caesar salad, almost connecting. Uh, no strafe used by Nano the Bala. Nano boost on to Cassia. Ball lightning. Ball lightning strafe. There we go. That's that's the strat. You nano boost. You ball lightning. You fend. People die. Now just do this. Mad. Six more times, 12, 12 more times. Oh, tw wow, that was my second number. Okay, I'm glad I'm on the same wavelength as you, Grubby. Fancy Pants, oh, I owe you a Coca-Cola. Uh, Fancy Pants will be able to get away. There's no Sleep Dart connecting, but re-engagement happening on to Got Filth, multi-shot containment disc, a lot going out, but it's uh, still Got Filth and crew living, finding the kill, and this will be our next Punisher, Mortar, mid lane. Um, do you want to get into comms for this objective, or may, do you want to wait till later in the game, Grubby? Yeah, let's, I mean, we, we can jump multiple times if sure. uh, we think there's ample reason for it. I'd love to hear from Granite Gaming at this point. They're 2-0, they're rocking, it's still early days, the objective comes up, let's hear it. Into Granite we go. 
at least one right here. What? Both is pushed in. I'm uh, getting tapped to win. I'll come. Uh, we kind of need to. Okay, oh, coming now. Our tap wins. I don't know if you Look here, maybe. I got uh, Sukov in the list. Hey, I can can't really. Can we still? Can we still here? I have W in too. Okay, we should have Regorge then. Okay, back up. Oh! Yeah, Careful stepping up. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're leading. Like, we don't have Stunning? to force. Yeah. I don't come out. I will out go, yet. I will go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, I go. He's bored here. Keeping on your turn, you're fine. Hey, back, back, back. I will get the hook here. He's about to get the hook. Oh, yeah. He's spinning you. Yeah, they get Tran. Yeah, it's not awful. I have a okay, again in 5. I can look here. They have 33. They're just gonna oh, play a shrine here. Look. Look, Stoko, here. Let's try. Okay, I just please. defended behind Gate. We are fine. Yeah. Oh, I need help, I need help. Yeah. I don't have anything for you. I'm gonna pull this guy, though he can't. Just go. Keep running. The young. Nice, nice. nice. I think he's coming up, but he doesn't have time. I'm coming. I'm just gonna TP uh, you in three seconds, Fancy. Stand back, stand okay. back so you don't get naded. Yeah. Let me tank this one. Yeah. Oh. TP's just gonna tank it. <clears throat> I'm eating you. I need top wave. I'm calling I'll, I'll go get it, I'll go calling. get it. Oh. We need to kill Punisher though. I don't uh, yeah, I don't yeah, I got fight Punisher. Yeah. Oh, he's taking aggro. Hit Punisher, okay. Yeah, but... Air? Eh? Oh, yes, mount. I the mount. I guess we just play for the... I mean, we're, we're giga fine. Yeah, now, like, now we... I'm backing. Keep again in one sec. With the Punisher falling, there was a lot of just, I want to kill this, but we need to clear Punisher. I got a hook for this, we got a clear Punisher. Good back and forth, but Granite yeah. Gaming, they will lose the Punisher phase. Not able to get the the, the hook, gorge, uh, single target combos. It's, it's There's a lot of really good setup, just the follow-up from Granite Gaming. It's not there just yet, Grubby. It's all down to whether the hook hits, right? If they hit so. the hook, they can do all oh. kinds of combos. Well, there we go, there's the gorge. That's what it comes down to, and they are, oh, nice sleep there, making sure that Cassia is not too far reeled in, but there is a re-engage. Cassia, though, gets the nano boost and just goes to town. Leoric actually got containment disc in order to make sure that he can't tomb the stitches, but this turns on its head big time. Meanwhile, I'm looking at mid lane. We've got Blaze and Rex are fighting. Nothing really too, too impactful as Aki kind of got a bit too excited there. I think he survived, so we look back at bot lane. Ah, no. No, he just turned bunker. on the head. Bunker actually has to be called by Aki in mid lane. It's the aspect of Hawk, but in bottom lane, Ultralis goes down. Aki is going to pop out and get the jump propulsion. Okay, for anyone that doesn't know, collision course. There's an additional 586 damage to the initial uh, 94 damage. Actually, I thought the initial Jet Propulsion had more damage. So you're dealing 670 some damage, maybe 680 damage from one Jet Propulsion. Huge Entomb from Bad Benny. Polymorph from Brightwing. Phase Shift from Brightwing comes through. Gorge on to Blaze. Blaze does not have Bunker. He used it in mid lane. He gets put right in front of the gate, which is kind of awkward. Why not right in front of the keep? Anyways, I guess the two towers shoot a little faster. Yeah, maybe he ends up... Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter. He's, sure. he's in the delta of triple damage, mm -hmm. right? I guess you put him on the other side of the keep. Uh, it's only keep damage. It may take a while. He also gets more damage against the keep, <laughs> perhaps. Where's the next hook? It's up and available. We do have this fishing hook, excuse me, the extended hook from hitting level 13. Also going to have the uh, serrated edge at level 7, which will give you cooldown reduction by 4 seconds if you hit the enemy member. So it's a 12 second cooldown on to hook. Containment disc on to Got Filth. He gets slammed. Where's the ball lightning? Where's the nano boost? Misha's in the back line, harassing the two there healers. There's a straight from Vala. Face shift from the bright wing. Got Filth pops the ball lightning. Ultra List gets the blink over the wall. Got Filth goes for the fan and gets the wrap around fend and this is another kill into the side of granite gaming diamond hands holding strong they want to bring funds back for game number four and it's looking like it's possible as the next shrine gonna be bottom lane gonna be frozen punisher with the 16 talents here on the side of diamond hands funds play Ana though like do you bring him back a god filth is just kind of scaling Whoa, suddenly maybe with the nano boost like maybe you just keep with what works 
I like I, I agree with you, Grubby. Like it's it's you know you've got five players that are warmed up. Nothing against funds, just you know you've been traveling. It's a little hectic, and you're uh, you also have to consider a little bit the mental space too. You're you're you packed up all your stuff. You rushed over to a family member's house. You're packing. You know you're getting everything back up. You're kind of in this rush state. So is that a consideration for Diamond Hands yeah. if they get to game four? We'll have to see if we get there. There's a lot of ifs for this game because. For anyone that doesn't know, this is the gauntlet for Hero CCL. This is not another group phase weekend. It's not like, oh, okay, we lost against Granite. We'll see you next weekend, CCL. No, you lose today, you're out. That's the end of your CCL season number two. Yeah, that's uh, some pretty big stakes there at play, which is something to consider, but maybe not overly worry about. I am. By the way, I'm, yeah, you, <laughs> well, just don't be worried. Oh, okay, I, I'll, I'll try and work on that in the future. By the way, have you considered, like, you're playing from your grandma's place and you're like, let's pop them! Let's pop off! Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, can you bunker over the wall? Can you jet propulsion into the wall, bunker next to the wall, and no, it's just going to uh, go to Valhalla. Witness me! Witness me! Well, they're expecting him to die, but it's going to take a little bit longer, so... A little more investment into the kill of Blaze. He does go down. The Punisher in bottom gets the keep front gate and maybe 30% of the keep itself. Yeah, that's, that's going to be about it. So uh, a pretty a pretty good mitigated objective phase from the side of Granite Gaming, finding that hook, gorge, pick combo onto this Blaze. And uh, is that the game-shifting moment? I mean, this is... Uh, I think it was a little bit earlier in the last game, but... Towers of Doom, this was kind of that point where Granite started to run things back against the side of Diamond Hands. Cassie going for bottom lane. Okay, this is everyone just playing their own sort of game right now. <laughs> Look at that. Bruiser invade versus mm -hmm. finishing off a half keep. That's definitely lead. Uh, a, a winning decision for Diamond Hands there. Granite Gaming decides, yeah, that's not good for us, but there is a way to get the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. They end up losing 20%, maybe more, maybe 30% of their keep health while stealing a Bruiser Camp. That doesn't do anything, but mostly just serves as a deny. Overall, mm -hmm. a strong macro play into the objective to deny the uh, Bruiser, but a weakness in their bottom keep. The win condition has now been made easier for Diamond Hands. I'm just doing some quick uh, multi-shot math. 440 damage, not considering the arsenal. The arsenal adds in another 243 damage. So uh, 683 damage from one W if the arsenal hits, if my math is correct on that. So Ty has a lot of really good chunking value. Hook onto the Leoric, but it's the side of the structure that doesn't actually allow the hook pole to come through. And that was an attempt to get a kill, which would bolster the experience of Granite Gaming in the seven to four kill game. But Diamond Hands continues to hold that lead and looks for 20 talents here slowly but surely through mid lane let's look what the level 20s are going to be possibly the 50 armor bunker and mm. uh, we might see a buried alive he might no. just go for armor no infinite ball lightning i'm i'm a little surprised by that i feel like ball lightning has been so powerful uh. why not go for it i guess rock stopper activate to fully charge avoidance and increase the armor value to 60 for four seconds uh losing avoidance removes this bonus so mm, armor I, is so good when you have true. double heal maybe that's why i mean yeah. i only take uh ball lightning upgrade infinite in storm lake but we always have to remember CCL players are going to be better at disjointing it, mm -hmm. possibly with a Rexar Feign Death, possibly with the Vault of the Warden by Maiev. When you get the hot potato, <laughs> you do a little unstoppable jump and stop the volleyball game. Oh, the hook. There we go. But Vapani is in position this time to stop him. Gorge is going to be on the far side of this Entomb. There's going to be a Nana Boosted Cassie with the Ball Lightning that's going to go to many, many players. There will be a lot of damage, but it's only on to Amisha Hook. Oh my god! Uki's able to get back nice into the bunker just in time. And this is a... Uh, no Master Hooker just yet, but we've stalled things out a little bit, Grubby, on the side of Granite Gaming as they're approaching 20 talents here. Maiev catches Soak in bottom. Misha up in six seconds. This should be an equal fight. This should be a big fight as well. Yep, and um, Containment Disc is coming back, uh, and Tomb will be back soon. Note, by the way, that Buried Alive would almost, strictly speaking, be a downgrade at this moment, because mm. it shortens the, cool, the duration of Tomb by one second. That means that you don't get, get as much anti-zoning on the Stitches, who's trying to abduct someone in his belly. So he just went with the normal Tomb that keeps Stitches where he is, 
and then allows time enhanced to respond and save said hook target. Going into this Punisher now, we're at level 20. It's not the worst lane for Granite to lose a Punisher in, and they still have one or two opportunities to use a hook and to get a kill and to take out the sting of this battle. Diamond Hans's positioning needs to be predictive. They need to react quickly to any hooks. Once hook is down, they've got another, what is it, 11 seconds, 12 seconds to play the game without threat of a hook. But it's Cassia, that's the worst target of all. Cassia is gonna get brought over to the top the best, lane keep. Yeah, the best, the, for best for Granite Gaming, worse for Diamond Hands has got filth comes in with the Fen, the Nano Ooh. Boost, and they are shutting down this engagement. Misha has a little stall. Maev goes down to the bottom of our screen. Henning is able to slowly fly their way over to that Hall of Storm. And Diamond Hands, they're holding wow. strong. It's looking like wow. a game three four. We know why it's avoidance now. 60 armor. Mm -hmm. Even with the keep minus 20 ing he still had 40 armor. And then the triple heal coming in from our substitute player, Caesar Salad. Cassia becomes from a tasty snack. She turns into your worst nightmare. Oh no, a 30% health Cassia. She's nearly dead. Boom, full life, Lana boost, ball lightning, the turnaround. Diamond Hands with their sub, they get their first map victory in this best of five. They're not down and out yet. The gauntlet is still on for both teams. And it looks like Beckwin gets to keep his job as we don't have a 3-0 series to kick off today's matches. It was really well fought and really well played. The big thing in that engagement, Grubby, is you mentioned that there was the big health boost onto that uh, onto the Cassia, and there's the nano infusion. Allies affected by nano boost heal for 50% of the spell damage dealt. So that ball lightning bouncing around, that is going to just heal up immediately. But we got Crowen back with us right now. I got to get your thoughts on that extremely entertaining Infernal Shrines game. Oh yeah, I'm glad it's not a 3-0 and we get that off the back of a protect the hyper carry, protect the president composition, and Godfilth is the one in charge. 84,000 damage, zero deaths as well. Such a well-played game by Diamond Hands, I think. They picked a scaling composition, but they still were able to have the impact at the early game because uh, Granite Gaming, they are pretty much nothing, it seemed like, without Stitch's hooks. There was a couple of moments where Maev was able to set up some engages in the early game, but after they fell behind, Maev would never be allowed the space to do so, so it was all on Skog. And even with that being the case, a great hook onto Cassia, but with all the level 20s come through, he's able to turn it around, take the victory there. Didn't anticipate that that's how the fight would go. I was like, oh, okay, Cassia's probably gonna die here. Granite Gaming gets a, a chance to maybe get some more map pressure back in their favor. They have to do it again if they want to win, but it didn't even get to that <sighs> point at all. Cassia level 20, got filth. I said it, all the pressure is going to be on him to be the mm -hmm. carry, be the hyper carry, and he's living up to his expectations right now. It was... We, we were really kind of surprised by the draft from Diamond Hands, and we I lacked faith in the execution of it as Cassia, she got attempt ganked three times early in the game <laughs> and it never went through the actual first yeah. death was bad benny on the york who was like 50 percent, and then ganked with a hook and such so granite gaming as as vicious as they seem oh, looking a little like a like a whale shark like it's it's still a shark but oh it's just a whale shark you're you're a-okay you know you don't have to worry too much it's not like they have many teeth uh like we were seeing in maps one and two from granite gaming but we get ready for a map number four and the question that i pose grubby and we talked about this a little bit in the game is does diamond hands bring funds back in caesar salad's warmed up he's coming off a win the entire team is riding a high and as i mentioned there is that little bit of uh excitement with you know having to run from your place to a family member's put your pc together get on comms get loaded in and all that kind of stuff does that even yeah. is that is that a consideration for the members of diamond hands or do they just go hey we want our main roster we're gonna get our main roster yeah and maybe like you're playing there you're pr you're trying to get back into the killer mindset and your grandma <laughs> keeps coming would you like some more cookies i'm like yes. go play grandma yes <laughs> absolutely no, you're, you, i mean it's, it's a video game it's over the internet mm -hmm. oh, what can you explain <laughs> one more time what's the internet dear no but uh i i don't know if like it's difficult now for funds to perform in this location mm -hmm. and wouldn't it be weird though? Like you've practiced together with this guy for weeks and now you're like, no, we're gonna try this today. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, like it feels, it feels, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of feelings there. That's the issue with teammates, right? But 
<laughs> this game went well. Yeah, uh, it was very well played. I also want. I, I'm also challenging you guys to say that Vala would have been equally valuable as Cassia no. in this uh, situation for Diamond Hands. Yeah, I don't. I think. I think Cassia was the was the uh, linchpin. I think is the correct term for that for the for the win for uh, Diamond Hands. Like they they were literally the reason. I think that game was a win. Ball lightning plus nano boost. I if you you trade that out for anything, I think it just gets shut down and blown up because ball lightning persists without Cassie existing. So like yeah. you put in Avala, she strafes with nano boost, she dies. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't have thirty armor either. Yeah, you know? she exactly. She doesn't have. So, uh, she doesn't stay alive as much there. But overall, I think both players can work. Uh, I think. Yeah, both players can probably uh, work out. We don't know if Fons is available yet. Um, they're going to try to make it work either way. As for the POV from uh, Granite Gaming, 2-0 elite, they had the Battlefield of Eternity game, and then they had the Towers of Doom game where they had a very difficult comeback, and here they just got kind of smashed from, from the beginning till the end. Their main weapon... Uh, their main weapon here, the Stitches uh, pick-off that everyone feared so much, got shut down in a way that we haven't seen yet by Anna Stukov. Uh, not by anything like, Karazim, let's try to kill the Stitches. Oh, there's a Stitches, let's try to get an auto attacker to yeah. Marion. No, it's just this heroic ability, teamfight focus draft with Cassia just getting all the love and Blaze and Leoric just distracting and protecting. We've been talking about maps. We've been talking about how these teams are playing. Let's actually crow and find out where we're going to for map number four. Where is it going to be, my friend? What are we potentially continuing or closing out the series on? Yeah, it looks like it's going to be uh, Diamond Hands picking Dragon Shire after their uh, win in the last game. And this is interesting. I think that Dragon Shire is, um, it doesn't really lead me to a direction of, of either being super Diamond Hands or Granite Gaming favored. But excited to see how people will approach this map. Because Dragonshire is a map where you have to be very aware of uh, all states of, of every lane, right? Because of what uh, alters that you control on the top and the bottom side, but also controlling the mid rotations can be huge, especially when it comes to the early game. We know that both teams can come out with uh, actually a lot of aggression from the early game. Diamond Hands is seeming like they want to pick comps to scale up more into the late game, though. And now that we look into the draft, we do see that Funds is back in uh, so I, i'm actually i'm a little worried for diamond hands with this i mean funds is an incredible player but as you both were mentioning of course you know there, there's all this you know hec hectic uh stuff going on with funds having to move his whole setup and they were actually looking really good with caesar salad i think in the mm -hmm. past couple of games sure they, they honestly in my opinion they, they threw the towers game it, it should have been a win over to their side so both games with that in mind uh looks pretty good from caesar salad's perspective their draft philosophy i i think is going to shift back to what they have been practicing leading up to this uh, to this gauntlet run to the playoffs, yeah. and judging based off of game number one, it didn't look like that really panned out, especially given the fact that was a map that they were supposed to win on BOE, but they didn't. Expectations are being shattered today as any sort of stats we've put together are, are being um, either broken or are put into shambles. We'll see if there will be a 23rd ban onto Lucio from the side of Granite <laughs> Gaming. And uh, the draft will start to unfold. We're heading off to Dragonshire. Top lane, really, really, you know, massive solo lane priority. Will we see a Rexar from one side? Will there be a Dahaka? Yorel's great for that as well. The Orc is, is, is a very important imposing i guess you could say uh factor into top lane he's uh, difficult to deal with at times uh maybe a genji for quick rotations my abs there's a lot stewing in my brain grubby but uh what do you what are you big braining into dragonshire for us here oh well, brightwing makes sure that you can never step up too much like a brightwing on the enemy team means you can never one-on-one -on -one to hmm. heart's content on top lane you can never keep top shrine forever so that is a good macro decision by diamond hands there are the other globals that you were talking about there's also the concern that Granite brings back the Chromie that had quite a lot of good value in map number one, uh, defending by herself. Do you remove that here? She can hold bottom lane by herself for free, allowing the rest to rotate and set up kills on the top lane. Aki might not be happy with that. Who is probably looking at a Hager here for his first choice, if it is still available when his tur turn to pick comes around. But they're going to remove the Maiev. Even though they did beat it, it remains a powerful pick for Ultralisk and Granite Gaming. Yeah. 
it's especially great on as this a, map. Oh, please, please. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, especially on this map, right? Maya being able to control uh, uh, rotations and have that early kill pressure is fantastic. They might have not first picked it, um, regardless, because Blaze is still available and Fangs Pants has shown such a dominance um, with that pick. But I, I think as well, you have to consider the potential globals as we we're kind of theorizing with the Brightwing ban. But there are things like the Haka and Falstead still available. Looks like it's going to be a Hogger once again for Uki because that is very much the preference there. But there should be some weight into um, being able to have these global picks and be able to win macro based off of, the, of that sense. I think that's something these teams should maybe, I don't want to say prioritize a bit more, but certainly keep on the radar. A lot to consider as we get into Dragonshire, because the radar is quite large for this map. As I mentioned, rotations into top, Maya plays into that. Genji's a consideration for some teams. Ty gets back onto Tychus once again, heading back onto Stukov. This is looking very reminiscent from game number one on Battlefield of Eternity, or excuse me, uh, game number two on Towers of Doom for the side of Granite Gaming. Um, I really like the Stukov. I was making notes last night that there's a few teams that when they get the Stukov, they're just such a difficult force to deal with. Flailing Swipe's a great tool. You've got the virulent reaction at 13 which is kind of joked about as the real heroic for stukov because of just how much of playmaking how much playmaking ability you now have with stukov at level 13 so the scaling from the side of granite gaming is going to be big at level 13 for even the blaze as well you got the um the new uh collision talent um or collision core excuse me which is going to be buffing out your your jet propulsion damage by like at level one you don't get it then but you get it at level 13 it's like 500-ish damage at level 13, so really good spot here, but now Grubby, we've had some bans, the, the maps, or the drafts evolving, what do you see in here, what's kind of showing up to you? Well, usually against Tychus, you may like to run Cassia, so that you can remove some of that minigun uptime, but of course she has been banned. Vala is available, but you typically don't pair her up with Sylvanas. We're going to be looking at mobile supports that can help save someone from a blaze Tychus. Support not picked yet. Could be a mouth there in the final pick. Could be anything. Could be even an Uther. I don't think it's even that bad as a solo healer. But it's going to be Junkrat. He can hold bottom lane really well and help set up kills. Kind of functions a bit as a tank to uh, do some additional attacks. May is going to keep the two of them alive. We've got good poke now. Good vision control with Junkrat. Some teleportation uh, from both of the backliners in case a Stitches comes out, which is something that you can still consider. But it's going to be the Anubarak Li Ming. We have a lot of kill power from the four man in the final four picks of Granite. Which healer do you keep someone alive with? I feel like it should be an Uther here. What do you think, uh, Eric Crowen? Yeah, I think Uther would be great in terms of um, going against this early game kill pressure. But once again, it's a composition from Diamond Hands that wants to scale into the late game versus the aggressiveness of Granite Gaming. While both of these two teams, I think, have grown a lot over the season, they're still kind of defaulting back to what they know best. And I am worried, actually, if this game goes, uh, um, if this game does go late, which is Diamond Hands' win condition, can Uther be able to be the support that uh, that sustains through these front to back kind of fights? The Murden ban came through because Diamond Hands. Diamond Hands recognizes that Murden's, you know, we, it's hard to go into that when you're just going front to back. He absorbs a lot of damage. The new Barak is going to be a bit less tanky than that, but still, I'm worried about Diamond Hands having quite enough to to, to get through this um this draft from Granite Gaming, especially if they fall behind early. That's the key. If Diamond Hands is able to be even in the early game, they can definitely put themselves in a spot to scale well and just be out sustaining Granite Gaming in these later game fights. Wow, very well put there, Crowen. We're loading on into map number four, and and as I sit here and I look at both these drafts, I'm leaning heavily into Granite Gaming as well. Yep. I love the Li Ming with the Anubrek. Like that that right there, like those last two picks, that's such a that's such a amplification of just how burstable and how aggressive you can be as a team. So we've loaded into Dragonshire. We'll see you after the game, Crowen. We'll see if your prediction is correct as we are here into our fourth map in our first best of five of the day in our heroes, CCL, presented by Wisdom Gone lit run on the left hand side the potential reverse sweepers they got to win this game in the next one but hey they're on the warpath we got diamond hands valimar on the uther got filth on the junk rat bad benny playing may funds back into the heroes of this back into the uh here's the storm game as they're playing sylvanas and Uki on hogger 
Over in the red, we got Granite Gaming. They're still trying to close out the series and go up against Wild Heart later today. Ty on the Tychus, Ultralisk on Lee Ming, Skoog on the Anubrak, Henning on the Stukov, and Fancy Pants. Once again on the Blaze, we get into mid lane, Grubby. I'm waiting for a potential fight to break out, but I do want to get your thoughts here. I'm calling for a Granite win because I just really like the explosiveness, the aggression, and the potential burst ability that they can really grow on the side of Granite Gaming. What do you think here is maybe I need to reconsider. Well, you said burst ability, right? Yeah. Did you mean th what they can put out or no. their ability to pop like a watermelon that's overripe? Nope. They showed that well so far. It's, uh, yeah, that, uh, that didn't, that didn't... Man, black my ex... Magic. Yeah, that, uh, I... just black magic them. I'm a magician? I'll get my owl in the mail soon to tell me to go to Hogwarts, <laughs> right? Something like that? <laughs> You're a wizard, uh, That's I've been waiting. Wizard, my, I've, I've been waiting. I've been waiting many years of my life to hear that. Thank you, Gerby. But uh, I do want to get your thoughts, though. What 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 do you yeah, think about yeah. these compositions? Um, dare I say any sort of uh, predictability as to who wins? I think a lot of people underestimate Uther's ability to sustain heal. Uh, people pick unoptimal damage dealers to try and quote unquote abuse Uther. I don't think it's really an issue for him to scale into the late game. He is the late game monster, actually. While at level one, his sustain suffers a little bit, he doesn't really have mana issues. He offers armor, he comes back to life. I don't know what's not to like. You would take him more often against lack of uh, oak, actually, if he was available. I feel like he's really well-rounded and he's got that re reliable uh, hammer of justice and armor. The main issue with U Uther is if your opponent has uh, the ability to control the objective better than you and they have better poke damage. That's not the case. We have more poke damage from Diamond Hands. I love what Diamond Hands has put together. I think they're a big favorite for this match. And I think this could be... I think this could end at level 20 and a half or something, like with Diamond Hands having a two level lead, if I had to make a guess. But I don't have to. We can watch this, mm -hmm. enjoy it, and we can see how it's actually uh -oh. going to unfold as Ultralist narrowly gets away from the Bad Penny and from the Junkrat there. Fancy Pants is a little far forward, but so is Ty joining in, trying to shred through the Hogger health pool. Skoog finds a flank into this Uther and Buh bye Maybe not. Hog bye, -bye. Wild. <laughs> bye, -bye. No, he's, he's, he's just waving goodbye. He actually, he doesn't have to do it in ghost form. He can do it in the real form as Skoog actually ate a lot of damage trying to set that up and unfortunate, not able to get the kill. Armor value, really, really strong. Ty stepping into Bad Benny. It is going to be, though, the bigger they are, since this is a larger map you don't typically have the hogger and the may fighting into you we talked about this last week actually grubby about when's the best time for bigger they are and i do like it here yeah. because ty is able to put pressure onto bad benny rotate to top put pressure onto ucky yeah it's uh it's a damage dealing uh effect that's very useful also into uther who does not have like 2000 healing all the time it doesn't work that way and oh nice kill there first blood there for granite gaming from Ooh. their side Godfield nearly goes down as he was just a little bit too close to the gate. Another thing about the bigger they are, it only works if you've got a different finisher. Li Ming kind of is their finisher mm -hmm. here. Genji, one of the most reliable finishers in terms of doing that job, but suffers in other departments. In this case, the job is Li Ming's. You can get a stun combo with a silence. The bigger they are, you pop them on 30%, then Li Ming finishes off with a mirror ball uh, arcane orb calamity uh, follow up. We'll see if that pans out because there will be peel as well from oh. Hagrid from Uther. Oh, nice kill there. That was. I, I got to point out how well read this was actually from um, from Fancy Pants with the Jet Propulsion. They actually they were reading into the May waiting for the icing and gets the Jet Propulsion just as the icing knockback is triggered. A Nubrak comes in with the Burrow Charge, locking down May consistently. Meanwhile, Tychus just doing Tychus things. And he also has, you talked about finishers, as you do have the melting point as well for some increased damage and damage over time on that grenade from Tychus. I really like the play from Granite Gaming starting things out. But Diamond Hands, they're showing signs of life here. Fancy Pants and crew almost step into Ucky, but Funs, Bad Benny, enough zoning potential, and Dragonite canceled out through bottom lane as Junkrat Tychus, or Tychus Hogger. Ooh, Tychus. Tychus Hogger top lane. Almost. Okay. Nice job by Ty. He cleared out top. He momentarily took control of the top lane as Blaze was involved in that uh, gank attempt there. And then he's like, I know Hogger's gonna go come top. He's, he, 
minigun is not going to do much because Hogger was already low, but he mm -hmm. can still try to damage him to delay him from defending the wall. Just little things where Tychus tries to get that disruption. Hogger is now a little bit slower. That means there's another chance for Granite to try and set something up in mid. They have an ever so small experience lead, but I feel like they need to get the siege camp to tie things together by time and be able to actually use the level 10 to get the Dragonite. For now, they're just capping bottom, which was at the halfway point. Feels like it would have been better to get Siege first, but Stukov has started on that. Ooh, 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 ooh. fancy pants with the read as there was three members rotating from mid into top. Aki already on the point, 10 talent here achieved on the side of Granite Gaming. Will be a wave of Force Lee Ming, Cocoon from the Anubarak, Stukov holding... <laughs> uh, Tychus is holding, but like, okay, I was, I was like, okay. I, I see a world where I can make jokes about Dra Drak and Laser Drill, but I see a world where Granite Gaming wants to win the game, so they go for Commandeer Odin. Flailing Swipes for the Stukov as well. On the opposing side, pretty standards. The only thing to note that's, I would say, maybe out of the ordinary at this point is going to be Mind Control from Sylvanas uh, rather than a Wailing Arrow, but it's not even out of, out of the ordinary. I think we get a kind of 50-50-ish on utilization or even pull potential. No Dragonite in well, mid, but bottom... What do you think about Hordapult? It's been all Shockwave recently. Shockwave having that reliable setup on someone and Hordapult potentially getting yourself in trouble. Nice ice wall there. It does not remove the silence arm? I guess not. He ice, wall he ice walled Stukov and the, and the arm stayed there. That's kind of a misjudgment, but <laughs> either way, the save gets made. Uh, though the whole fort has gone down and that's pretty much all that Granite Gaming wanted. Does... Okay, I, I feel like it's because we're going into this auto attack at level four as well, increase the range of loot hoard by 20% and damage to 50. So maybe you want to play, you know, you hoard a pult in, you throw your loot hoard, you, you're playing into those factors. Who knows? Right now, what we do know is that Bad Benny's getting chunked in this bottom lane, has the icing to disengage. There was the weighted pustule applied by Henning. He actually has that long pitch. That's the reason the, he, uh, the weighted pustule connected on such a far distance, but the icing is unmitigated by that slow and uh, potential Dragonite for this mid lane. Granite Gaming, can they grab it? Hoggers in top. I don't know. Like, I just, I like the loot horde because I think it's, it's a lot of body blocking. Shockwave. I think Shockwave plays better into, like, dive burst. So, like, if there was, like, a Cassia, the Shockwave would be better. With the Junkrat, I just yeah. don't think it's enough. Yeah, probably. They, they, it's, you're right. They lack a little bit burst. And his job now is going to be actually to escape. Mm -hmm. That's his goal there, to escape any uh, mind control. And also to set up only Ming slash Stukov. As a big rip tire comes in, Bunker will actually protect Blaze, but not Tychus. Tychus is so low coming out of this. Nice peel there from Anubarak. Tychus, 100 life. Can they finish him off? Valamar going ham. There's stuff happening on the right side as well. It's the Holy Radiance that finishes him. Valamar with the kill, with the safety D shield. Aki tried to actually get the staggering blow interrupt against Fancy Pants. But yep. he didn't get it. So Fancy Pants gets away. In comes Bad Benny again. Scope with the dodge. Was able to sidestep. I think the icing was canceled a little early as well. I don't know if uh, Bad Benny wanted to dive that deep into a Nubrak's face, but we will find the Tychus kill through Diamond Hands, and Diamond Hands potentially gonna get objective. Long pitch would have made it, but there's an animation that has to happen as well. So first Dragonite of the game goes over to the side of Diamond Hands, and this Dragonite 265 into standard, but hold on, I'll hold that thought as Mind Control goes fishing, Ultralisk is shut down, but the Dragonite into structures, 531 damage, and we're seeing double siege. Dragonite mid, Savannah's locking down bottom. Two towers will fall in favor for Diamond Hands. As Tychus is kicked away, he does the vast majority of damage to the Dragonite. A uh, really uh, big advantage suddenly for Diamond Hands. You can't see it in the XP, but structurally it tells a different story. Still having Midford available offers a lot of map vision advantage. The siege camp here still lingers, pulls Tychus in the direction that actually allows Diamond Hands to smartly navigate top to the two-man that Blaze just removed, and they threaten top to maybe go for it. You have the immediate response from four people. Had Dragonite still been in position, Bob, they could continue a little bit, but Diamond Hands doesn't want to play it greedy. Every single game is match point for them. Mm -hmm. Every single game. And, and then that's actually a really good point, too. You want to make sure that you're playing as smart as possible in this gauntlet. Keep I keep bringing up this factor, but, you know, sometimes we get new viewers. Sometimes people, you know, they don't catch these things. This is the CCL gauntlet, which means 
This is do or die. If you lose in your best of five series today, you are out of the season. Hortipult in from the Hogger. He's going to block the escape path of this Blaze. Mind Control, but Bunker comes down just in time. Mind Control avoided. There was a Steel Trap underneath Blaze. He has the Pyromania. He survived for so long, Grubby, but <laughs> the Granite Gaming members are touched too late. They're not able to come in and save the Blaze. He's picked off. It's 4-2 to two in kills, 15 up on both sides, and structurally, it's an advantage over to the side of Diamond Hands as they have one extra fort down, through the mid lane. When you get ganked like that, you never think like all that for me. <laughs> <laughs> they used almost everything except rip tire and D shield, but they're fairly short cooldowns. This is good judgment by Diamond Hands to really get that kill on lockdown against the ever so hard to catch fancy pants. That kill has netted them a nifty advantage. Soon a talent lead with the Bruiser Cam pushing in here as well. And all their heroics are back. Worth it indeed, as the next lasers aren't available yet. But this could be a good time to fight. Oh, there's a jet propulsion. Nice uh, will of the Forsaken. Mm -hmm. As I look at Uther's cooldown, he did use cleanse as well. So it was cleanse and of protection into will of the Forsaken. Oh, wow. But the Will of Forsaken also will give you a little uh, extra movement speed. You move at 140%, which is 10% faster than mount speed. So that also got funds into just a better position as well. And for all the chaos that ensued from game one till now, funds is playing a very controlled, level-headed game. Good play from Diamond Hands in map number four in this Dragonshire gauntlet map up. Ma ma match up, excuse me. <laughs> map up. I guess it is yeah. a map up. Yeah, it's a map up for Granite Game. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, this was a smart rotation from Granite, right? They got mm -hmm. the top forward, knowing that bottom siege had to be dealt with. In the meantime, though, Diamond Hands has set up their own staggered threat. Siege camp and bruiser camp? That is a huge problem. You could tr choose to push with it, or you could choose to take down the top forward and get the top laser at the same time. Diamond Hands is kind of straddling the line between doing neither. I don't love it. They are setting up for the Dragonite though, but Fancy Pants is there to interrupt. This doesn't feel like the strongest way to play it. Top lane is not pushed out by Diamond Hands. They didn't kill Top Ford. They had an even bigger wave pushing than the very same one that Granite used to leverage their own top push. I think, feel like it was a misplay. It didn't lead to any action or fireworks, but it will have to be compensated for with other good plays. Junkrat is showing in top lane, so the call to go in on the fight is going to be there. There's a divine shield onto Aki with like 100 health. Ice wall comes out, rip tires around, Ultralis tries to clear it out, but it still explodes onto a few Granite Gaming members outside of that ice wall. Aki comes back in with the hog wild, gets a good bounce. A new brag with a bird charge in, Fancy Pants comes in with the jet propulsion, finds the damage, and the kill into Hogger. One kill, can they find a second on the side of Granite Gaming? No virulent reaction, wave of force pushes Bad Benny to the safe side of the gate. But with the kill onto Hogger, there's a quick rotation to top lane, a little bit of zoning in the the, uh, the Delta or the mid to bot area, excuse me, and uh, I think we look for a dragon on the side of Granite Gaming, but is it possible? It's a 4v4 in bottom lane, Tychus stepping forward, Bad Benny icings in, blinds onto this Tychus, he's trying to get away as he's a little bit low, gets the healing pathogen, holy jeez grubby, the back and forth right here in this game number four, it's getting explosive as we're 18 to 17 in levels. Fancy oh, Pants yeah, actually oh. taking several catapult shots. I'm looking at mid. He's actually in the clear now. Skok actually oh. bought enough time. Granite Gaming gets the Dragonite. Nice job by them. Milking their health pools for all they're worth. Getting the DK, which is for now just clearing waves. It's going to apply a little bit of pressure mid. Probably take down the two towers, then head back and wait for a flank. That flank is being set up. Bad Benny stops it. Will of the Forsaken stops the punt. And that's more damage into the DK. Meanwhile, though, Odin gets turned on in the bottom lane. They get the bottom keep wall, even as DK ends up uh, being a different threat in the mid lane. Dragonite's hitting for just sub 700 into structures, so mid lane fort will go down. Structural advantage technically over to the side. Uh, not technically, it is over to the side of Granite Gaming as they have taken down three forts to the two forts on the side of Diamond Hands. And it's uh, it's a close game here, Grubby. The Any sort of experience gain has been mitigated from both sides. We actually see a slight experience gain for the side of Diamond Hands, but there's still waves to be cleared. And uh, we're looking at maybe like couple hundred difference between the two teams it's a close one and and i mean it shows it's the gauntlet like i keep saying this but it's a very big factor to consider diamond hands lose here that's season one of excuse me season two of ccl done for diamond hands yeah exactly and 
You can feel it, can't you? Mm -hmm. The difference in decision making. Though I will say this, they will have a lot more time to hit exclamation point awards in chat and vote on uh, themselves. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, they. I'm. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they would love that. <laughs> You know, I, I was like, now's a good time to plug the award show. Why not? But 20 talents here on the horizon. This is exciting. You were talking about, you know, the game was going to get to about 20, level 20, 21 and a half or so. And we're going to see if the grubby crystal ball is correct. Who's going to win at 20, level 21 and a half? <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that suddenly. Oops. That's, uh, it doesn't oh, feel very no. likely anymore. Oops, oh, top. Cocoon, wow, too. Nice. Nice kill there by Granite Gaming. They got the virulent reaction. They got the kill on Hogger. There's another combo from Henning coming up. Valimar didn't like it. D-Shield. Hogger is down. And did this come at the worst possible time? 45 second death timer. When is that announcement? Maybe perhaps a bigger loss even than Hogger is the D-Shield. But you know what? Granite Gaming wants to make use of that short window. Hogger will be down for a bit when the lasers are up. Granite can either use Odin to secure the DK or now to siege. It looks like they were considering it. Mm -hmm. They've chosen to focus on the objective. Will Gar excuse me, they will on the side of Granite Gaming grab this camp for bottom lane. Blaze rushes to top lane. Hmm. Okay, Hogger's up in 15 seconds. Do you want to jump into Granite Gaming comms? Maybe see how they play into all of this? There's a lot of macro that needs yeah. to be. All right, let's get into Granite yeah, Gaming comms it. now. Please come to me. It's fine. Oh, they're on me, they're on me. I can buck. We're coming, we're coming, we're coming. So, we're getting the dragon. 5v4, kind of. They're coming with the rest. Okay. I'm just coming out, I'm just coming out. You sleep, you sleep, yeah. Wait, I two. need a crunch. Oh, fuck. I'm gonna, gonna pop level 1 here. Yeah, nice. Huge. Uther is back here. We go for Tapping the Uther. Ah, help me, help me, help me. You, you start to play to leave, you split to leave. I will end the game. No, no, clap him back. Go, go, go out home. Go out home. If he goes in, I, I go. I will end the game, boys. You play to leave and stall them. Okay. I should yeah. be okay. Here. Uh, May is back in here. Yeah, May is up here. If we can, can stall. Him. Uh, oh. The man is still there. Nice. They're That's running low? back now. Yankert is mining oh, himself. Oh, I saw, I saw Benny. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. Yeah, yeah. It's good. Let's fucking go, team. Ice cream. Yeah, they're back now. Granny. I'm coming. I'm coming. I was the song again. No, don't yeah, sing it. Don't sing it, dude. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might get the one shot. Oh, fuck. Kill him. Can we kill him? Yeah. I'm slowing it. I have, I have Bunker in Santa for core too. Yeah, yeah it's full on core. Full on core, boys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And with that, Grubby Granite Gaming will solidify their win against Diamond Hands. You could even hear. They started singing the Lobber Curse song. I was referencing it earlier. It is one of the things in the award show uh, uh, nominations. Lobber actually cursed Granite Gaming on Sky Temple, and Granite Gaming got wiped a few weeks ago. And so they started singing it, and they were like, no, 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 we don't want that. But hey, Granite don't Gaming, Granite Gaming, they're going to take the game number four, Dragonshire, against Diamond Hands. Diamond Hands is knocked out of Hira CCL Gauntlet for season two. Granite Gaming has the members of Wild Heart to go up against later today, but right now I gotta get Crowen back in here. You've been watching from afar. What's your analysis breakdown, even thoughts on how everything unfolded? Yeah, relatively a low kill game there, judging based off of, uh, you know, what expected more based off of Granite Gaming's comp, but they did play that end game sequence actually super well. They able to recognize that, hey, let's just play to stall the members, just play to not die by as much time as possible to let the DK go through the whole bottom keep, because still the bottom keep was, I think, almost full at that point, <laughs> and then to the core. And they recognized, you know, very well as soon as the keep was, you know, getting through the, or the DK was getting through the keep onto core that they won the game from there. They weren't being pressured at all, and they still very much so had you know members alive to be able to secure the deal, even if the DK was dealt with. But um, it was definitely a back and forth game. I liked Diamond Hands having, um, I think, more of an early game presence than I would have expected. They maintained relatively even, even, and even punished um, actually Ultralisk on the Li Ming early game um, when you know you stepping too right. far forward. So I think that was definitely overall super, super well played. Um, by the side of both teams, but Granite Gaming with the end sequence, again, um, victory to their part, and they get to advance forward in this bracket, so exciting stuff for them.
It was exciting to jump into their comms and hear how they were playing everything and communicating who needs to get killed, who needs to delay, and boys, I got it, just delay him, I got, I, I'll end the <laughs> game, don't worry. But I believe we have Henning on the line at this time. Henning, congratulations on your game one victory, or your first best of five of the day victory. How you feeling after all that? Shaky, calm? Uh, um, that's, uh, it's a good feeling, getting this series over with. Um, game three was a bit iffy, uh, the Cassia, uh, kind of hard to kill with the double support. Um, so yeah, but this one, we were kind of scared of some Xi's coming in, like some Abba Samuro based on their bans, but thankfully they didn't do something like that. Oh, it's it's a, uh, I'm sure you're sitting happy for this one. You got another game coming up in a little bit, so we don't want to keep you too long. I'm going to throw it over to Grubby for a question. Grubby, take it away. Yeah, I'm going to keep it real short for you. I don't want to, Analyze too much on the previous match. You guys played great. Nice comeback on Terrace of Doom as well. Uh, you're still in match mode. You've got more work to do this weekend. Um, just thoughts going into your next match into Wildheart as you recalibrate. Um, yeah, we got a good feeling coming from this game now and also from playing Wildheart this last weekend. So we played them really recently and we we also have the the icebreaker win versus them, so we're feeling good, confident, and uh, respectful. Mm. Good luck. Very, very humble of you, my friend. Crow, any questions for Henning? Yeah, I think it's good to be respectful of your opponents, of course. Uh, and I actually wanted to get perspective of your preparation leading into these playoffs, Henning. Was more time delegated to your first matchup versus Diamond Hands, or did you kind of 50-50 it between prepping for them and Wildheart? And, and how that, what did that prep look like? I think we looked at their like matches and their drafts in general, like what they prioritize. And based on what we play, we practiced our stuff heading into this, like our priorities, our meta and our variations in draft. Uh, that was why it was like a bunch of uh, Cassia bands in general messed up on that in game three. Because Godfield <laughs> has a really nasty Cassia and uh, yeah. Yeah, also we knew that they liked double support with their comps, but didn't really get a lot of that this series. Very interesting, very insightful. Thank you for the question, Krellen. And as I said, Henning, we don't want to keep you too long, so before you run out of here, any shoutouts that you'd like to give? The floor is all yours. I mean, shoutouts to my team, popping off. Uh, not done yet, we want to play tomorrow as well. Um, shoutouts to Granite and to, to CCL. Because now is where the where the real fun of the season has begun. So yeah, stoked to keep on going. Well, thank and you also so to much Twitch chat. Interview, One oh, last. Also to Twitch chat. GG till I die. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Henning, for joining us. Good luck in your next matchup. We'll see you in a basically like half an hour or so up against Granite Gaming. Yeah. So good luck in resting, preparing, and we'll see you in a little bit for your Wild Heart matchup, my friend. Yeah, thank you. See ya. Thank you for joining us. Man, just a very humble, very humble in his just approach and they're staying level-headed. Grubby had mentioned this earlier when we were talking about, you know, how do you come into this? Do you do you play elated that, you know, you took that game one where there was a DC or do you stay level-headed? Do you, you keep, you know, your nose to your to your book, essentially your, your draft, your playbook, there we go, and uh, play smart. And they absolutely did. It was a really, really good game from Granite Gaming. It was a phenomenal series so far, but you can see at the bottom of our screen, we're getting prepared for that second second best of five of the day. It's going to be Wild Heart versus Granite Gaming. And we can actually break things down a little further for you as you can get a visualization of what is unfolding so far. We started with Diamond Hands, our seventh place, excuse me, our seventh place team, seventh place team, there we go, words, <laughs> versus Granite Gaming, the eighth place team. Granite Gaming just took that series in a 3-1 fashion. Now Granite Gaming eliminates Diamond Hands from Hero CCL season two, the gauntlet bracket. Granite Gaming moves on to Wild Heart. Wild Heart is our sixth place team and this will be our next best of five coming up in a little bit will wild heart be able to shut down granite gaming will it go to a five game series as henning was just saying henning beat 
excuse not Henning, but Granite Gaming beat Wildheart last weekend in the group stage play. It didn't really have any effect on who was where when it came to the standings, but there is a little bit of a uh, bolster to your team knowing that you're going up against a team, as Henning mentioned, you beat last weekend and you beat them in the Icebreaker tournament. So we'll have to see what Granite, Granite Gaming is able to do going into the series. We'll take a small little break here. We're going to stretch our legs, eat a little snack. In that break, I encourage you to hit exclamation point PSD, where you can check out all of the best IRL underwear for your IRL skins. It's wonderful. And if you like comfort, if you like brand new underwear, you can use Wisdom, W-I-S-D-O-M, at checkout for 20% off of your order. I highly encourage you to hit exclamation point PSD in chat. Lastly, before we go to this break, exclamation point awards show, as we do have an awards show coming up at the end of July. So make sure you get your nominations in for that one. But as I said, we're going to take a short little break. We have an interview with Kyle Ferguson and Buds. And in that break, enjoy. We'll see you for Hero CCL presented by Wisdom in a little bit. 